Arkansas, Indiana. A rainy day pursuit of a stolen sport utility vehicle. Near Wayne Junior High. 10-4. Behind the wheel, a 14-year-old kid who picked a bad day for a joyride. The kid isn't even old enough for driver's ed. He showed up at school in a stolen car to impress his friends. Now he takes a corner at top speed. The officer knows this eighth grader is in way over his head. The cop tries to pull him over, but the kid only goes faster. One mistake and he won't see juvenile court. He'll wind up in the morgue and maybe take some innocent lives with him. Knowing that other cops have set up a roadblock, the pursuing officer wisely drops back. I can't see him. He must be doing 90 now. The kid approaches a busy intersection. The officers block off the side routes but let him pass. They want to lead him to a less populated area. The plan works. On a desolate country road, the cops box him in. But the kid just rams his way through, sideswiping the officer's unit. This punk has gone beyond simple car theft. He's just assaulted a police officer with a deadly weapon. He's about to find out how deadly that weapon can be. He takes the corner too fast, and it's all over. From the cruiser behind, the officer can clearly see that the heavy vehicle can't maintain traction on the slick road. The rough approach has even jarred loose the officer's camera. Hands up, hands up, get out of the car. They pull the kid from the vehicle head over heels. Stunned by all that's happened, he finally cooperates. This boy should have stayed in school today. In time, he would have learned how to drive safely. Instead, he learned a lesson that was a real no-brainer. Drive carefully on wet streets and never, ever run from police. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Deep in the heart of Georgia. Oh man, bingo. Pistol packing criminals run and gun. Put your hands in the air. On four wheels, on two wheels, and on no wheels. But no matter how hot it gets, the cops take them down with a bang. Cops know that people are innocent until proven guilty. But if these guys are so innocent, why are they running? Most people think serious crime only happens in big cities. But the rural South has more than its share of dangerous criminal activity. In Dooley County, Georgia, they know how to handle the problem with the sheriff's department that's second to none. We brought our cameras to catch these men and women in action. We covered everything from violent simunition training missions to dangerous high-speed pursuits. From what we saw, any criminals with Georgia on their minds better think twice about Dooley County. This cyclist thinks his mean machine can outrun a Dooley sheriff's deputy. The cyclist tears up the road like a jackhammer on wheels. On a hard turn, he just misses a guardrail. He takes a curve at 110. G-forces push him across the road. Okay, we're coming up to 17 junction now. 10 junction 17. A crossroad. The suspect tries to fool the deputy by changing direction. The only person he throws off is himself, right off the cycle. Incredibly, the man is still going. He jumps to his feet and races for an open field. But if he thinks he's getting away after all that, he's got another thing coming. The Dooley County deputy follows him, vehicle and all. Dispatch, suspect is still on foot. We are still in pursuit at this time. The man staggers. He's exhausted. He falls. And finally, he's under arrest. Three times the suspect escaped death. But no one escapes the law in Dooley County. In some 
cases, the suspects don't try to run, but they do have something to hide. How you doing tonight? Keep driver's license, please. The reason I stopped, you checked it 82 miles an hour and gave me zone. Any reason for running that fast tonight? Uh, something wrong with this car as far as acceleration. The man says the car belongs to someone else. In Dooley County, that's a warning sign. The driver's answers are all evasive. Then he talks to the passenger. How you doing? All right, I'm... You know who's driving the car? You know him? What's his name? The driver gave his name as John. The deputies know something isn't right. I knew it was stolen. Right yeah, here on I-75, we run into a bad problem out here with people transporting. Illegal guns, drugs, that sort of thing. Would you have any objection to me searching to make sure? The suspects, of course, are allowed to refuse consent unless the deputies find probable cause. A canine officer arrives to do a quick sniff for drugs. His scratching indicates that drugs are present. Now the deputies have a right to search. In the ashtray, a deputy finds marijuana. Don't you know anything about that, do you? But these cops aren't interested in one marijuana cigarette. Their instincts say that there's more to this Lincoln than meets the eye. Oh, man, bingo. Man, we got a gun. Marijuana, I know. Man, it's got to be about a 40 key from park. The deputies discover a semi-automatic, a party-sized bag of marijuana, and a double kilo of cocaine. With that size compartment, there's no way that that compartment's built to hold that. I wonder if that's their cut. They may have gotten their cut, but these smugglers couldn't get their story straight. So what'd you say your name was again? John. Bob. Bobby. Scott. Ed. Ed. We call them Peanut. Whatever their names are, the trip through Dooley County is about to take a detour, straight to prison. Some of the worst chases follow a robbery in progress call, so deputies train constantly to quicken the response time. Here, an armed robber is caught on a bank surveillance camera. Hidden in his paper, a 45. The teller pretends to cooperate. The robber doesn't realize she's tripped a silent alarm. 10 got a 1090, Citizens Bank, 1090, Citizens Bank. 10 a duly deputy arrives at the parking lot just as the suspect flees. A police helicopter locates the suspect. On the ground, deputies pursue him at nearly 120 miles per hour. Do advised, road crosses 15 about a quarter mile past the overpass. 10 4 coming up on 15. The suspect takes a turn. He nearly loses control. His vehicle weaves like a snake in the Georgia grass. On a dirt road, the suspect leaves a blinding cloud of dust in his wake, but he can't see what's around the bend. All units be advised, the sticks are down. Repeat, the sticks are down. Just ahead, deputies have laid out a spike strip. His tires are history. Tempo, suspect just hit the stick. Tires going down. Even with flat tires, the suspect pushes forward. But with deputy vehicles all around him, he's now boxed in. The suspect tries one last desperate move. He pulls into a deserted house. Totally be advised, uh, suspect's bailing out. When we return, the Dooley County deputies face a deadly standoff. All fire department personnel, please stay clear. On world's wildest police video, Dooley continues. Throw your weapon and come out with your hands in the air. One man's criminal rampage leaves a community sifting to the ashes of ruin. Next, an armed robber leads Dooley County deputies on a high-speed pursuit. Desperate, he pulls into a deserted house. Dooley, be advised. Uh... Out. Even before his vehicle stops, the man is out of the car and running inside. They want this man in custody now. The suspect is armed. Repeat, suspect is armed. It's an extreme caution. To get him out in the open, officers try using flash grenades. Still, the suspect refuses to come out. Throw your weapon and come out with your hands in the air. Do it now. Suddenly, the deputies notice smoke coming from the house. Within minutes, the smoke has become a billowing cloud. Then flames are spotted. For your own safety, leave the house down. Time is running out. For the gunman, this fiery showdown is about to become a last stand. Come out of the front door with your hands in the air now. 
Firefighters are called to the scene, but they can't enter until the suspect is in custody. It may be too late. Fire department personnel, please stay clear. Suddenly, the man rushes out. He tries to run, but deputies tackle him from all sides. Suspect now in custody. But the same can't be said for the house. Despite the efforts of firefighters, it becomes a blazing inferno. For Dooley County deputies, dangers like these go with the job. What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops, real crooks, real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress. From impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. In my 27 years in law enforcement, I've seen the tragedy of crime compounded by ignorance. Because if people don't know the dangers of crime, then they can't protect themselves. In the next hour, we're going to show you close up the world of crime and criminals. So get ready to get ready. Smithfield, North Carolina. In the history of terrifying pursuits, there has never been a chase like this. It's extraordinary for one reason. The suspect driving this car is only 12 years old. The boy stole the car only minutes ago, and though he can barely see over the steering wheel, he sure can reach the gas pedal. Right now, it's floored. It was more or less, he was running from the police, he wasn't gonna stop. I, I tried to stay on as best I could. He maneuvers his stolen sedan like a maniac, barreling through intersections, racing through school zones, and flying over railroad tracks at over 90 miles an hour. One minor mistake, one slight overcorrection, and this boy won't live to be a teenager. The police are torn. How do you chase a 12-year-old child? All they can do is try to stop him before he hurts himself or somebody else. But how? The faster they chase him, the wilder he gets. He's running another one. Right now, officers have no choice but to keep a safe distance and hope their flashing lights and siren will be enough to warn oncoming vehicles. But at these speeds, that's almost impossible. Here the boy jets past the pickup truck and cuts over just in time to avoid an oncoming big rig. The combined speeds of these vehicles would have been like hitting a brick wall at over 150 miles an hour. Somebody running from the police like that uh, is not really thinking about uh, human life as a normal person probably would or should. It's a nightmare, trying to chase someone who has no skill and no fear. He barrels up behind a wide load on a blind curve. More oncoming traffic, but that doesn't matter to this boy. Incredibly, he swerves wide and rushes ahead. The lane is clear. Once again, he dodges a bullet. By now, the boy is feeling invincible. But officers know what happens to clueless kids when they get cocky. For no reason, the boy suddenly darts into opposing lane. He missed the white car by inches. I realized that if he'd hit that car, then most certainly somebody would have been hurt or killed. This insanity must end. The officers realize that saving the boy from himself is now more important than catching him. 
They turn off their lights and sirens and follow at a safe distance. They hope the boy will notice and slow down, but he doesn't. Going faster! Thinking he's home free, the boy pushes even harder to make matters worse. He's headed back into town. He's got to be doing at least 120 now. Then, the inevitable. A half a mile down the road, the boy loses control. Cruisers and unmarked units rush to the scene. They find the car in a ditch. Amazingly, the boy has escaped serious injury. But he has no idea how serious his situation is. I remember the first sergeant walking over to the vehicle, and he leaned in there to talk to the child. He said, son, you know you're in, in bad trouble. And uh, he looked back at the trooper at the first sergeant and said, no, sir, I'm not either. I have my seatbelt on. Every day, cops are forced to ask themselves the question, is it safer to chase or not to chase? There are no easy answers. But then, there are no easy pursuits. Today, Grand Theft Auto became child's play for a reckless 12-year-old. And although he'll spend the next several years in a state juvenile facility, this boy should be grateful. Living through moments like these probably makes him the luckiest kid alive. In law enforcement, the helicopter is the ultimate pursuit vehicle. Because no matter how fast a suspect drives, he can never outrun one of these. Tampa, Florida. A white sedan tears through traffic pursued by police. These ground units are about 100 yards behind, but they are keeping pace. The driver is wanted for violating his probation. But when police tried to take him to jail, he punched an officer and raced away. He's using the median like a passing lane. All right, OK. Oh, it's a red light. He's not stopping. This guy is taking wild chances, breaking every rule of the road. He's not even on the road now. Just passing the traffic on the dirt shoulder. Blowing by cars left and right, barreling down the wrong side of the street. Get over, get over! And racing into the face of oncoming traffic. Oh, look out! That is a near miss. There's an, oh, man! Oh, what is with this guy? The way this suspect is risking innocent lives, the police have to wonder, is he hiding something? Is he guilty of a crime the police don't know about? Why is he running so hard? He's blowing the signal. He's going left. No, no, right. Oh, my God. He clips the truck's fender. But when he keeps on driving, the suspect adds hit and run to his rap sheet. This man is completely blind to danger. It looks like he didn't even see them coming. And deaf to simple common sense. Oh, no, not the school bus. He just cut off that school bus. Police back off when the man races into a residential area. There's a dip. Oh! The car can't take much more of this kind of punishment. With the cop cars out of sight, the suspect figures he's alone. But he's forgotten about the eye in the sky. He's still heading northbound, and there's another intersection. OK, OK, he almost T-boned. Wait a minute. OK, he's stopping. He is stopping. As the suspect tries to sneak into a repair shop, the choppers keep the ground units informed. Corner of Florida, Nebraska. Officers are there in seconds. There are several units on scene right now, and they're going right after us. Within moments, the cops pull the man out of his hiding place. Man, that was so crazy. We both worked in the car, and like that, boom, 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 you know. I have a little puppy at home, and I just wanted to get home and, you know, take care of it. A puppy? The cops aren't buying this sob story, and neither will a judge. This reckless... He just cut off that school bus. Lawless senseless fugitive endangered countless innocent lives. And what was his excuse? A little puppy at home. But when his rampage finally ended, he found himself in the doghouse. Coming up on World's Wildest on. Police Video. The running never stops. Oh, that was too close. Drunk drivers run on the highway. Teenagers run loose in the street. And robbers run off with the loot. It's all here. All wild. All real. Next. When crime comes knocking. When the rubber leaves the road. Send paramedic unit. When push comes to shove. A cop. Get out of the car! might be your only hope. Serious trauma. 
teenagers face a lot of tough decisions, including the friends they choose. As any parent can tell you, it pays to choose your friends wisely. Avon, Ohio. The teenage passenger in this van thought he was just going to catch a movie with a buddy. Suspect failure to yield at this time. Suspect failure to yield. But when police tried to stop his friend for speeding, his friend gunned him. Now he's trapped in a senseless high-speed chase. Okay, hey, dispatch, they copy. I copy it in in person. The van reaches speeds of over 100 miles per hour. The passenger can only hold on. The driver ignores police warning. He's gambling with his life and the life of his friend. He starts to lose it, repeatedly crossing the center line. He veers into oncoming traffic, then barrels through a red light. Guys all over the place. He tries to round a turn at high speed. And smashes into a pole. The teenage driver makes a run for it. Police find the frightened passenger still glued to his seat. Moments later, his friend is caught, but both teens are arrested. It's a hard lesson learned. Unfortunately, stories like this one frequently end in disaster. Here we are in Rogersville, Tennessee. A patrol car passes a carload of teenagers. The driver tries to turn around, but almost loses control. Then he floors it. Backup vehicles coming the other way try to block his path. The driver veers into the other lane, forcing a car off the road. But there's a sharp turn ahead, and these kids are going way too fast. The car tips over, its taillights turning one on top of the other. Okay, send for a medic unit, please. And what's about to happen next is incredible. The driver scrambles free and runs away. Hey, come on around me. Go up the road and get that and run on me. Another officer gives chase. But the reality of this tragic accident is just now becoming apparent. Police find the other teens trapped beneath the crushing weight of the car. While officers try to help the three teenage victims, Maddox alerts paramedics. The one that is peeing, is it a serious trauma? That is correct, Jim. You are going to look at serious trauma. 10 four. The paramedics arrive moments later. All three teenagers suffer critical injuries. Watch it. These drivers will have to live with the consequences of their actions for the rest of their lives. Unfortunately, so will their friends. Florence, Alabama. Two drunken teenagers are out for a late night joyride. The driver has borrowed his father's pickup. He and his buddy have a six pack. They have the town to themselves. And now they have trouble. Blowing in South Ohio, 1031 southbound. Copy 1031. The kids make a run for it, skidding into a parking lot. Veering insanely, they just miss a shack. Now there's nowhere to run, so the boys charge back toward the road. The cops turn around to cut them off, but the driver makes a wild exit. He's treating his dad's pickup like a stunt car. The kids get rocked by the landing and keep their frantic pace. Seconds later, the officers follow them down a side road. Ignoring a stop sign, the teens try another high-speed turn. But this time, their daredevil flight gets grounded by a bush. Get out of the truck now! These drunken joyriders thought they could spend the night raising a little hell and running from the law. Now this driver is not only facing charges of DUI and reckless endangerment, but he must explain to his father why he trashed the family pickup. Come here, come here. Los Angeles, California. Two robbers hold up a liquor store. One of them carries a gun. Two shots are fired. The clerk and one robber are hit. The crime takes only 17 seconds. The robbers may think they've pulled it off, 
but justice finds each of them in a most unusual way. It starts when the first thief pulls out his weapon and points it at the surprised clerk. The terrified customers escape into the street, and the second thief leaps over the counter. But the threatened clerk has a gun of his own and fires directly at the second thief. The first thief fires blind as the second thief scrambles back over the counter. As they head for the door, the second thief lifts his shirt, amazed to discover he's been hit in the stomach. He dies moments after leaving the store. Within hours, police arrest the surviving thief. They don't charge him with robbery. They don't charge him with assault. He's charged with murder, the murder of his friend. In this case, although he didn't actually shoot his accomplice, he's the perpetrator of the crime. He's responsible for everything that happens during the crime. He instigated the robbery. Somebody died as a result. He gets charged with murder. Each of these crooks paid a heavy price for this crime. One paid with his freedom. The other paid with his life. Next on World's Wildest Police Video. What goes up must go down. A Utah man burns up the road. A Washington gang scoops up the loot. An American soldier cracks up a car. Even when they go down, get out of the car! they get back up for more. Next. They do the impossible to get away. Sometimes they make it. Sometimes they don't. Salt Lake City. Police units tear through the night in pursuit of a fleeing robbery suspect. Up ahead, an officer deploys razor-sharp spike strips. I'm not trying to get my spike. Uh, they're coming up on me now. Despite tear away the suspect's front left tire. Now he's running on the rim. Joining the high-speed pursuit, the officer catches up in a flash. But when the cop swings into the right lane, it looks like the suspect has the 4th of July under his chassis. Grinding steel at 80 miles an hour, the suspect leaves a 30-foot-long trail of sparks. When the rim gives out, the friction gets heavier. He's got to be on the brink by now. I'm now at 60 miles an hour. The police try to close in, but passing isn't an option. Every one of those sparks is actually a white-hot chunk of molten metal being ripped off the front of the suspect's car. The smoke is thick. The heat is on, and the danger level is through the roof. I'm not going to get close to it. He doesn't keep in after staring. At any moment, a stray spark could ignite the gas tank and blow the car sky high. That would be the end of the suspect and the lead unit. He's on the bumper. He's not going to be able to go much further. After miles of fiery pursuit, his car is finally giving out. Well, they go down to 39. But as long as fire, gasoline, and speed are involved, no one is safe. Now be careful. Look careful. It's far from over as the man jumps from the burning car. From behind, a unit spots the suspect running for the woods beyond the fence. So the trooper in this unit uses his vehicle to end any chance of escape. The suspect can't believe it. And by the time he recovers, the police are on him. This full throttle thief burned his car to the ground and blazed a trail across the highway. Oh, it's all over the place. But when the fireworks ended, the police made sure this fugitive took the fall. There's a new breed of criminal on the streets, and for them, violence is second nature. Washington, D.C. The owner of this jewelry store, along with his wife and daughter-in-law, carry on business as usual. They courteously help three customers in the store. But these customers are here to help themselves. Excuse me, uh, don't move. Don't move. One of the men leaps over the counter as his two accomplices take care of the wife and daughter-in-law. The robbers threaten to kill the women if they resist. 
They don't care that the daughter-in-law is nine months pregnant. The thieves bust open the cases and scoop up diamonds like ice in a bucket. Then they shoot out the glass of the locked front door and make their escape. The robbers made off with over $30,000 in jewelry. But thanks to this videotape, they were soon apprehended by the police. These men were convicted of armed robbery and assault. Lumberton, New Jersey. Officer Jim Myers stops this Ford Taurus for speeding. 116 traffic stop. 116. Inside the car is an 18-year-old driver who has just deserted the military. To make matters worse, the car is stolen. He was on his way to sell it when he was stopped. So when Officer Myers steps out of his cruiser to give him a ticket, the kid floors it. The suspect had made a series of bad choices over the last few weeks. But approaching this intersection at 80 miles an hour may be his last. He never sees it coming. Neither does the young woman approaching from the other direction. The suspect gets spun like a top before finally stopping on the side of the road. 160, East TC, at the junction of 206 and 280. Request paramedic unit. Copy, 160, paramedics in the road. Officer Myers finds the suspect dazed but uninjured. However, he's not taking any chances. He handcuffs the teenager to the steering wheel and rushes off to check on the young woman. Incredibly, she suffered only minor injuries. And she'll be okay. But the suspect's troubles are just beginning. In addition to a court-martial, he's facing charges of auto theft, felony evasion, and aggravated assault. Instead of serving his country in the military, he'll be serving time for going AWOL. From the law. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. The dangerous, the desperate, and the, truck over. the good, Can you walk back this way? the bad, I'll you away. and the deadly. There's somebody with a gun down there. A pursuit through the winter snow. A suspect makes a big mistake and a chase that goes too far. Send her medic unit. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. She's naked in the neighbor. There's one on the run. They got him. They got him. There's two eye to eye and three over the line. Armed and dangerous. He's got a gun. The crooks keep coming. He has just got to give up. 24 7. In any high-speed chase, a police officer is going to be constantly assessing the pros and the cons of continuing. He wants to know at what point the risk to innocent lives becomes too great. And that can be a tough call. Avon, Ohio. A man has kidnapped his two children from his ex-wife. Now he runs from the police in a pickup truck. His terrified children along for the ride. If that suspect is not responding, we are in pursuit. The roads are treacherous, but that doesn't stop this father from putting his kids' lives at risk. He takes an icy turn at 50 miles per hour. The guy's not slowing down. He's driving very recklessly at this time. Then he pushes it up to 70. Desperate to shake the police, he suddenly pulls a U-turn. But the cops are ready, swooping in to block his path. The crazed father weaves through the roadblock, missing cars by inches. It's clear the man has no concern for his children's safety. But the cops do. They call off the pursuit. Maybe they can catch the suspect later. But it's a sure thing that if this chase continued right now, somebody was going to get hurt. Lorain County, Ohio. Three burglary suspects try to escape with a truck full of stolen goods. Unable to outrun the cops, the suspects try to outmuscle them. 
they deliberately try to knock the police car into a road sign. Trying to ram cruisers. But these cops can handle a few hits. They recover just in time to get around a big rig. Now it's the suspects who are on the shoulder. Okay, we're coming up under the Naval Road overpass. He's going into the medium trying to pass. The truck's driving becomes more erratic and more dangerous. This pursuit can't continue. The cops order the driver to stop. In the heat of the moment, the rookie officer on the megaphone gets carried away, but catches himself mid-sentence. In the pickup truck, power over. You are, or shots will be. In the pickup truck, pull it over. An 18-wheeler up ahead may provide an opportunity to end this dangerous chase. The suspects are about to get boxed in, and they know it. They suddenly cut hard across lane, barely making an off-ramp and just missing an exit marker. At 90 miles per hour, the pursuing vehicles can't make this exit. It's time to call it off. A seasoned officer knows that no chase is worth getting someone killed, including yourself. Sometimes a suspect is his own worst enemy. This chase in Willoughby, Ohio is already at 90 miles per hour. When the driver pushes it past 100 to pass on the shoulder, police decide to call off the pursuit. The cops hope the driver will slow down before he kills somebody. But he doesn't. He takes it up to 120 and passes another truck. In a matter of seconds, he triples his distance from the police cruiser. He thinks he's free and clear. The suspect blazes up an exit ramp like a rocket. But this missile is about to go off course. There's a turn at the top, and the driver doesn't see it coming. Unable to stop, he explodes through the metal guardrail and smashes headlong into a towering 80-foot light pole. The pole snaps in two. A thousand pounds of metal comes crashing down to earth, flattening the car. Sometimes cops don't need to call off a pursuit. The suspect ends it all by himself. In any chase, there are three lives at stake. The officer, the criminal, and the innocent motorist. Because cops don't want anyone to die, they must sometimes call off a pursuit. It may not be the ideal outcome, but considering the alternative, it's the only one possible. Not every arrest goes according to plan. I placed you under arrest. I'm not going to let you go back to that vehicle. <laughs> Faced with hard time, a suspect can suddenly turn violent. For cops, it's an occupational hazard, even if the suspect is already in custody. Baytown, Texas. A cop books an unruly suspect on a DUI. I have to videotape this interview, all right? This cop sees a lot of drunks with attitudes, but he's never had one like this before. Mr. Gibbs, get off the desk and will not hold you. The man is not about to comply. He's drunk, he's angry, and he thinks he's above the law. Keep your hands off of me. Get up and stand against the wall. Don't you keep your hands off of me? I spit on you, you see, I whoop your ass. And I bet you I'll whoop you. This drunk's behavior might impress lowlifes on the street. His hollow threats might make some punks back off. I bet you I'll whoop you. But his repulsive actions don't phase this officer. This cop's a pro. He has a job to do. Mr. I'm going to read you your legal warning now. You have the right to remain silent. I'm not going to listen to this. Suddenly, the man makes a move to leave. Come back. He makes a big mistake. The cop reacts. Other cops help get the man under control. Settle down. Keep the mic here. Yeah. Tried back me two, three times earlier. 
Gibbs now faces a stiffer charge, assault on a police officer. He learns a lesson the hard way. You may get away with spitting. You may get away with empty threats. But you can't hit a cop in the Baytown jail. Coming up on world's wildest police video. Crime runs wild on America's highway. This is getting very dangerous. A woman in Baytown gives officers the slip. Get out of the car! A drunk in Arkansas I'm a shit drink. comes up with a whopper. CIA. And teenagers in Texas. About 16 years old, 17. Tear up the road. They just crashed. No holds barred. You're under arrest. No punches pulled. No easy way out. They've got him wedged in. He's stuck. Get out of the car! This is just an accident waiting to happen. Oh, there goes the bumper. It takes what it takes to stop a criminal. A couple of cops. How much did you drink? And a pair of cuffs. You're under arrest for driving while intoxicated. An off-duty cop in a pickup truck. A team of cops in a squadron of cruisers. You just gotta give up. Who don't go home until the job is done. They got him. They got him. When a chase begins strangely, the only thing a cop can count on, it's probably going to get a whole lot stranger. In Baytown, Texas, Officer Malcolm Fowler gets a call about a green SUV on the run. But when he pulls up alongside, he observes an interesting detail. The suspect is a woman, but that's not all. She's naked as a diaper. It's obvious. This is not going to be a normal pursuit. Hey, Dan, I need some help up here with this Fowler calls for backup, expecting a cruiser or a cycle unit. But the help he gets comes from an off-duty cop driving his own personal vehicle, a pickup. Officer Fowler has no time to reflect on how odd this situation is. Things are getting dangerous. The suspect weaves wildly, trying to get around the pickup truck. The officer's box her in, but the suspect isn't ready to quit. She nearly runs over and crushes the off-duty cop while making her escape. The chase is on again. As traffic gets heavier, it becomes a life-threatening series of cat-and-mouse maneuvers at 80 miles an hour. Take it, take it, take it. The suspect races off the freeway, but when it looks like things are getting tight, she makes her own on-ramp. Fowler and his off-duty partner catch up in a hurry, only to find they have some unexpected help. The civilian in this black truck gives the officers an assist, blocking the suspect in. Now there are two pickups in this chase. It's a brave and reckless move that almost costs the Samaritan his life. How many cars he's knocked off the road? The determined citizen comes right back again. This time, the suspect makes a muddy escape across the median. Pursuing this wild driver is getting more and more hazardous by the second. Got the pedal, the pedal. Thankfully, out of nowhere, a roadblock appears ahead. It's that same helpful citizen from before, blocking the road with his black truck. But the suspect goes right around. The only thing the man ends up blocking is the police. The chase continues, weaving and slaloming across the highway. Officer Fowler can't even imagine the report he'll have to file. He's chasing a reckless, naked woman in a two-ton vehicle. And he's got a misguided Samaritan and an off-duty cop as his wingman. It just doesn't get any stranger than this. The pursuit moves on to narrow two-lane streets. With the off-duty cop in front and Fowler behind, the suspect has absolutely nowhere to go. Officer Fowler has had enough of this bizarre chase. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! He quickly arrests the woman and puts her in his cruiser. Finally, regular backup arrives. But after everything he's been through, Fowler is faced with one last dilemma. I don't have the talent to put around her. Just when a cop thinks he's seen it all, a chase like this one comes along. One off-duty cop 
and one gun ho Samaritan ended up with dented trucks for their efforts. The female suspect received an extended trip to the state psychiatric hospital. And as for Officer Malcolm Fowler, he got a reminder of just how bizarre and dangerous this job can be. A man has driven his pickup truck over the curb. Now he's stuck. When a cop arrives, it's soon clear that the man is in no condition to sit behind the wheel. Hey. Have some trouble there? Yeah. For safety, the officer immediately gets the man to move away from the road. Why you stand up for me? You got the driver's license on you? Stay back out over this way. You got driver's license on you? No, I don't. You don't? No. Oh. So you don't have one at all? Or you don't have a witness? It's not a trick question. But the suspect is so drunk, everything trips him up. The officer tries to go easy on him. How much did you drink? I just had lunch. Let's get this squared away, man. Okay. The officer remains courteous and efficient. Then the suspect reveals an important piece of information. I'm working on the same side of the street you are, man. He's claiming to be a government agent. Okay. It's CIA. It's CIA. You got any ID on you? Oh, hell no. The cop informs his partner that the man works for the Central Intelligence Agency. Thought he works for the CIA. Do you really? Where's the branch? Again, the man is stumped. The suspect has answers. The cops just keep asking the wrong questions. Do you know uh, your ABCs? I know where I was born. I'm a citizen. Okay, but do you know your ABCs? D, X, Y, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Can you say it through for me? M, M, O, D, E. Can you start at the beginning? So much for the oral exam. Now they test his motor skills. Come on. Walk, walk, my, walk, walk towards me. Come here. The man won't budge. But like any good spy, he does have an eye for detail. Oh, God, look at the arms. I tell you what, can you just stand with your feet together? Yeah. Can you just once you just try that for me? Can do this. What was that? Yeah. The cop has been patient. But enough is enough. And that's all you do? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good enough. Try and put your hands on the truck for me. Come on, man. The suspect pleads to be let go. He thinks he's fit for duty. But anyone that's blitzed is a definite danger on the road. You're under arrest for driving while intoxicated, okay? Like it or not, this spy is coming in from the cold and spending the night in jail. Maybe the next time he drinks, this James Bond wannabe will have enough intelligence to stay off the road. Converse, Texas. Police chase two fleeing teenagers, suspected house burglars. Fresh from a job, their car is filled with loot. I've got two subjects in the vehicle, about 16 years old, 17. Both may have weapons. Juvenile delinquents armed and on the run. An extremely dangerous combination. The driver veers across this road. Going on Moments later, he almost slams into a truck. For now, police stay back, waiting for the right moment to make their move. The driver makes a sharp left turn, then another, but the police never miss a beat. Across the bridge. They've got to stop these kids before they kill themselves. Up ahead, cops have a surprise for them. Two cruisers form a roadblock, but the teens have a surprise of their own. Coming up on 15, 18 exit. The cops know the felons will try to make this exit. Because it connects directly to a suburban neighborhood, they fear the teens could then flee on foot. He's gonna run. And easily lose the cops in the maze of houses. They make the turn. But the driver suddenly loses control and slams into a concrete barrier. The car rolls down a hill and screeches to a stop. Put your hands in the air. Their 
burglary career is over. For now. These two juvenile delinquents may be spending some real time behind bars. So the next time they think about robbing someone's house, they may just change their minds. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video, cops team up to catch a thief. Be running, but honest citizens, uh, there's a woman in the middle of the road Get down. in the way. Next. Helpful citizens can be a cop's best friend. But when a misguided Samaritan becomes involved in a high-speed chase, the results can be tragic. He's right under us. There he is. San Bernardino County, California. The driver of this car is one of the threatening other commuters with a gun. Traffic is moving, but he's passing cars left and right. As the roads get more congested, the suspect begins weaving in and out of lanes. It looks like he's going to act. No, no, he's staying westbound. More dangerous weaving. Still, officers hang back. It's too crowded to make a move. He won't stay in one lane for more than a few seconds. The police can only hope none of these near misses turns into a deadly collision. Oh, that was too close. The chase moves off the freeway, but the threat of a crash is far from over. OK, now he's on Serpent Street. Now officers have a whole new set of problems to deal with. This hour-long chase is being televised on live TV. As a result, well-meaning civilians try to lend a helping hand. Oh, there's a woman in the middle of the road down there. What is she thinking? She just hit the car with her hand. But she isn't the only aggressive Samaritan. He's turning left. Hold on. Look at that red car. What? What's he trying to do? The red subcompact is shadowing the suspect. This is the kind of blind bravery that gets people hurt. He's going through anyway. Whoa, watch it. This is just an accident waiting to happen. But the most dangerous attempt at helping comes from a truck driver. The driver is going around that flatbed. I'll tell you, this is getting very dangerous. Given a choice, the police would let this chase run its course. But this guy is getting annoyed. He's yelling at somebody. What if the irate suspect decides to run over the next person who tries to interfere? That's a risk the officers can't take. They act decisively. Oh, oh, he spun out. Oh, no, he's on the sidewalk. The attempted maneuver fails. And now the suspect is running scared and driving on edge. That was almost head on. With the driver now acting reckless, officers have to end the chase immediately. They hit him again. He spun all the way. Another one. He has just got to give up. But the crunch of metal only convinces this guy to run harder. The cops are right on him, forcing the suspect off the main road. Working together, two units double-team the road rager. They've got him wedged in. He's stuck. Oh, there goes the bumper. After bouncing off a parked car, the suspect tries to keep going. That car's just going to fall apart. A final ramming leaves the car disabled on the median strip. Looks like it's all over. He's getting out. He's running. The desperate man makes a break for it. He runs hard, but he's got more Samaritans and several uniformed officers on his heels. He's going for the backyard of that private house. The suspect is caught from behind and goes down in a painful heap. They got him. They got him. But once again, a well-meaning citizen complicates things. There's somebody with a gun down there. A resident of the house is armed and ready to protect his property. Police disarm him, sending the man back inside before somebody gets hurt. The suspect is led away in cuffs, surrounded by reporters looking for a scoop. He has yet to be tried or convicted. But what can he say? He was armed and running from the law. Excuse me, sir. Did you fire your weapon? His arm was on the floor of the car. As the suspect is taken away, the street is full of curious neighbors. It looks like the whole neighborhood's out. It's a reminder of how many lives were saved by ending this chase. High-speed pursuits are dangerous stuff. Even for trained professionals, it takes total concentration. But when civilians try to be heroes, it can actually make a cop's job twice as hard. Police didn't wait for a good Samaritan to end up a dead Samaritan. Instead, they acted fast and brought this chase to a crashing end. Program. Viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. The uh, movement with his shoulders as if he was driving like he was going to swerve at me. The officer reacts instantly. For one heart-stopping moment, the cruiser takes flight. When the car was airborne, I thought this, 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 could, this could hurt. This could really hurt me. But now the deputy finds himself on a collision course with another cruiser. 
At the speed that he was traveling when I came back across the roadway, if we would have made contact, if I would have even touched his car, uh, it could have sent him spinning. The officer is out of the pursuit. But the car stealing kid runs out of luck. A few miles away, the BMW breaks down and the suspect is caught. The capturing of the subject was probably done within 15 minutes after the time that I uh, ran into the guardroom. If the 15 year old subject can learn one thing from this chase, I hope that he learns that it's better to stop and face the consequences now than it is to keep running. This kid was driving like he was going for the high score in a video game. Numerous lane change violations. But this wasn't a game. It was real. On the inside lane, I got a unit in front of me. Real life, real fast. Coming up on one of your units. For one inexperienced underage driver, it could have been deadly. Stop stitch did not work. And for one experienced deputy, on 25. It was the fastest, scariest chase of his career, and a ride he will never forget. South Salt Lake, Utah. The four suspects in this car were just involved in an aggravated assault. They tried to start a fight at a bowling alley. When the security guard stepped in, one of them threatened to pull a shotgun. Now this wild bunch is on the run, tearing up a local suburb. They barge through red lights right in the red light. and blow stop signs without caring who might get in their way. The officers want to ram them. But on these neighborhood streets, it would be far too risky. Instead, they give the suspects a warning tap. The driver brushes it off and charges on. The officers can only follow. Suddenly, the road widens. Now is their chance. And this time, the primary unit gives the car more than just a tap. The officer clipped the suspect's rear fender, a perfect pit that whipped them 180 degrees and killed their engine. Patrol cars swarm the vehicle. It turns out the stunned foursome does not have a shotgun. They decide to give up without a fight. As officers get the suspects out, they make a startling discovery. The reckless driver is a woman, eight months pregnant. Thankfully, no harm was done to her unborn child. This soon-to-be mother has a lot to learn about responsible parenting. Tonight, she ignored rule number one. Don't let your child be born behind bars. When an officer pursues multiple suspects, he has to make a choice. Which one of those suspects poses the greatest threat? McDonough, Georgia. A white Nissan is pulled over for a routine violation. But when the officer gets out of the patrol car to issue the citation, something unexpected happens. The passenger takes off on foot, and the driver roars away. The officer jumps back in the patrol car and goes after the Nissan. He finds it making a U-turn nearby as a second passenger tries to bail out. Interrupted by the officer, the driver steps on the gas and lays rubber. His friend still clinging to the open door. 2118 Central. With his pal back in the car, the suspect races through country roads, blowing stop signs. I'm making a right on Phillips. After stop sign. When he gets a lead, the driver eases off the gas just long enough to drop off another passenger. The officer could easily let this speed demon go and call her the runaway instead. But the real menace in this situation is behind the wheel of the Nissan. And the policeman intends to stop him. The suspect whips onto a busy highway, and the danger skyrockets. As the driver roars up to a stoplight, an 18-wheeler is in his way. So he uses the left turn lane to go around the big rig, just as the light turns red. 
with no concern for anyone else, the defiant driver roars through the intersection. He then veers right past two backup units onto an access road and rockets onto a crowded interstate. With his lights flashing, this guy is definitely a high-speed hazard. He charges down the left lane, tailgating other motorists. Officers have to put a fast end to this pursuit. Speed's gonna be approximately 85. With the aid of another police unit, the officer gets ahead and blocks the suspect in. Okay, slow it down, take him to the wall, box him in, box him in. The driver is finally shut down and shut away for a year. This officer didn't go after the first passenger, or even the second. And speed approximately 85. Instead, he chased down the suspect. Take him to the wall. Who drove a four-cylinder compact box him in. like a turbocharged hot rod. Because he was the real menace. Coming up on world's wildest police videos. Look at you. The fastest chases ever. Get it, get it, get it. A triple digit dash down a Florida bridge. Bumper cars at 90 plus. And motorcycle mayhem. Ooh, he just about lost it there. And full throttle. When bad guys have a need for speed. He's gonna cut the median. Good guys will do what they have to do to shut them down. Fools and drunks. Stand right at the end of that white line there. When suspects this reckless hit the gas, him shoot a motorcycle. They don't get wise or sober. Well, watch out now, don't let him hit you. Until it's too late. Here's to give a roadside sobriety test. Walk right over here to him. She would stand right, right at the end of that white line there. But something tells him his subject just isn't going to pass. Stand right. I want you. I want you to. I want you to stand at the end of it. Look at you. What are you doing driving a truck in that condition? Trying to do what he did. What who did? Catfish. Your buddy? Yeah. But Catfish is nowhere to be found, leaving this guy on his own to face the music. All right, I'm asked to take a couple tests for me. I can't. You can't? Why not? Well, for one reason, I, I'm drunk, man. He certainly is, and the tests will prove it. The first test requires knowing the alphabet. So he asks about the man's education. You got high school? I got 20 years of education. I graduated 10th uh, grade twice. <laughs> OK. It's hard to argue with logic like that. And with two decades of schooling, the alphabet should be no sweat. Close your eyes, tilt your head back, and go ahead and recite it for me. Close your eyes. C, D, E. Watching him wobble, the officer puts his hand out, just in case. L, M, O, P. I'm just, in case you fall down, I don't want you, I'm gonna catch you. Oh, thanks, man. That's more than catfish would do. The corporal is flattered to be a better buddy than the immortal catfish, as the man stumbles to the end of the test. I believe it's X, Y, Z. Thank you. Despite his troubles, the man is willing to do another test, as long as he knows the officer is there for him. Close your eyes. You gonna catch me for the fall? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. You know I'm drunk. <laughs> eyes closed, keep them closed. Okay, left. All right. Left. Right. All right. God. <laughs> Left. All right. With all the evidence he needs, the officer reads the drunk man as right. He had the right to remain silent. Maybe. The suspect knows he doesn't have to answer any more questions. You understand it's right to explain to you? Yeah. But he also knows there are some questions that hardly need answers. You been drinking? Well, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> yeah, you're right. 
And now that he's suddenly seen clearly, there's something else that's obvious to the man. But you are taking me to jail. This guy was definitely a funny drunk. I've got 20 years of education. I graduated 10th grade twice. But there's no such thing as a funny drunk driver. You could have run into somebody's house. So no matter how nice the officer was to him. In case you fall down, I don't want you, I'm going to catch you. Oh, thanks, man. That's more than catfish would do. There's no question that this man belongs behind bars. All right? Not. And not behind the wheel. Henry County, Georgia. A van barrels down a backwoods road. West King and Floyd. Moments earlier, the driver bolted from a citation for a cracked windshield. It was a snap decision. A bad decision that the man barely has time to regret. Suddenly, the lead-footed suspect hits a bend in the road at full throttle. Just 41, just 41, give me some backup. The results are heart-stopping. In one terrifying instant, the van catapults off the pavement. Just 41, just 41, give me some backup. Astoundingly, the driver is alive. But he still needs convincing to give up. Put your hands out the window! Put your hands out the window! As the man reluctantly emerges from the wreckage, get on the, floor. the get officer on proceeds the with caution until he can get this culprit handcuffed. Get on the floor. By the time backup arrives, the policeman has his suspect in custody. This impulsive driver tried to outrun a citation for defective equipment. Give me some backup! But now he's got a whole lot more to fix than a busted windshield. Next, on world's wildest police video. I got one running. High pressure. This guy's an idiot. High drama. <laughs> a high stakes struggle with a Carolina crack dealer. And a high speed battle on a Tampa Bay bridge. Coming your way. Oh, man. Speeds uh, of 100 miles an hour. It doesn't take a rocket scientist on the car. to know what this means. So, what part of stop? Pull it over and stop. Don't these guys. I need help. Understand. Pinellas County, Florida. When a black Camaro charges across the county line, three sheriff's deputies take over a tire burning chase, tearing through the dark morning hours with the speedometer needle buried at over 100. The two suspects are determined to leave police in the dust. The driver is a known felon who already has two warrants out for his arrest. The car they're driving is stolen, and the trunk is full of counterfeit bills. These are career criminals, and they must be stopped. Corporal Richard Nalvin leads the pursuit. We were traveling a while on the interstate, anywhere from 100 to 115 miles per hour at any given time. Suddenly, the black sports car rages onto the Howard Franklin Bridge, 30 feet above Tampa Bay. The corporal floors the gas and manages to get ahead of the stolen vehicle. And as early morning commuters head into downtown Tampa, this causeway becomes a life and death obstacle course. Working as a team, the three squad cars try to surround the suspects. But like a wild animal, this Camaro refuses to be caged in. I had to now drive through my side view and rear view mirrors and watch what was going on ahead of me, as well as what was occurring behind me and what the suspect was doing. Again, the officer veers in front of the high-velocity fugitives, this time risking his own safety to keep an innocent motorist out of harm's way. With only four lanes of road and a three-story plunge on either side, deputies are hard-pressed to keep this pursuit from blasting back onto dry land. One more time, Corporal Nalvin whips in front of the suspects. We were able to slow the vehicle to a point where we were closing up a box-in maneuver. We were going to use the man-made barrier of the Howard Franklin Bridge wall on the left side of the bridge as the fourth side of the box. Deputy Howard Skaggs moves into the side position, while a third deputy records the action on his dash cam as he brings up the rear. 
Now completely boxed in, the suspects make a desperate move. Deputy Skaggs can only hold on as the stolen car slams into him, and the Camaro wildly skids across the road. He struck my vehicle, went spinning out of control. His vehicle was destroyed. But not even a crippled car can stop these outlaws from running. However, they jumped over the edge of the Howard Franklin Bridge. That was quite a surprise. Amazingly, the men survived the death defyingly. They may have eluded the deputies, but not the Coast Guard. Within hours, both men are caught. When rampaging felons blew into Pinellas County, three deputies went on a heart-stopping, engine-gunning, fender-bending pursuit. But with patience, skill, and precision, the trio of officers made sure that these high-diving villains never stood a chance. Police officers never encourage civilians to put their own lives in jeopardy. But when an officer needs help, a good Samaritan can be the difference between life and death. Mebbin, North Carolina. A patrolman goes after a luxury coupe that rolls through a stop sign. But the officer isn't just looking to write a ticket. He's seen the driver around town and suspects him of selling drugs. So as the officer approaches the car, he's keeping his eyes open for anything out of the ordinary. The man doesn't have the paperwork, but he's got excuses. Again, the answer is no. This guy may have something to hide, but he isn't hiding anything when three rocks of crack cocaine fall out of his sock. Put your hands on the car. Put your hands on the car. But instead of cooperating, all right, all right. the man struggles with the officer. All right, sir. Drop it. All right. Drop it. Drop it. The suspect is clutching something in his hand. Worried it might be a weapon. Drop it. Give the bill. The patrolman forces him to let go, and the dealer's drug money goes flying. When they get back to their feet, the fight intensifies. The officer uses his pepper spray. But at such close range, both men get a face full of mace. Now the policeman is fighting the desperate suspect and his own reaction to the pepper spray. Put your hand down. He needs help. Put your hand down. Thankfully, aid arrives in the form of a good Samaritan. Moments later, another citizen joins in. By the time the first backup unit arrives, the suspect is in cuffs. The officer thanks the men. But they aren't done yet. These civic-minded citizens help clean up the scattered cash. And even though some people would consider keeping a little for themselves, these two men hand over every cent. They know it's evidence. Well, get your names, oh, I wow. appreciate it. it was a sense of relief when they walked up. You know, anybody that wanted to help out could have helped out that day. Put your hands on the car. This drug dealer lost his stash. There's a big plastic bag full of crack. His cash. <laughs> and this roadside wrestling match. I need help. All because two good Samaritans were willing to protect and serve. You got it. They call an officer in need. It's good to know that you have people out there that's willing to help you. But I, I appreciate it. OK, that's OK. Yeah. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Speeds of 100 miles an hour. What were they expecting? Carolina Crooks didn't expect this. Rioters in Korea didn't expect this. And Florida car thieves. Weaving all over the roadway. Definitely didn't expect this. Expect the wildest. We just about lost it there. Next. For every action, there is a swift and powerful reaction. Police cruisers are built to take the hard knocks. 
because you never know when a police pursuit will turn into a battle of the bumpers. Spartanburg County, South Carolina. Sheriff's Deputy Randy Hollifield takes the lead on a hot pursuit. Going by the split, going by the split, headed towards Springfield Crow. The two suspects are wanted for 70 home burglaries. Deputy Hollifield isn't going to let them reach 71. He taps their bumper. It's a warning that this deputy means business. Instinctively, the driver hits his brakes. But then he decides he's up for the challenge. When they decide to run, number one, that's probably their biggest mistake. Number two, I think that even though people think that they are, they're not trained to be able to drive the way that they're going to be driving. Up ahead, police scramble to set up a roadblock. Meanwhile, the suspect figures he can dish it out as well as take it. He cuts off another police car. Sensing that the wild driver might do something crazy, Hollifield sends up an alert. Hell, you watch him, because he's going to hit you. The officer tries to stop the car before it reaches the blockade. But it doesn't work. As terrified drivers watch from their cars, the officers have no choice but to let the crooks through. Now it's one-on-one, -on -one, and Deputy Hollifield takes the gloves off. Incredibly, the featherweight car holds the road. The deputy moves in for the knockout punch. He's weaving all over the roadway. The driver's head flops like a rag doll. Anyone with a brain would stop right now, but these two blockheads keep going. The suspect swings right, making one last effort to trick the cop. But the officer has a trick of his own. He's now at the perfect angle for a pit maneuver, an officer's ultimate pursuit weapon. The deputy's persistence pays off. With a perfectly timed hit, this high-speed rumble is over. It makes you feel good to know that you took somebody off the, off the street that's been breaking into uh, people's houses and, and, and taking their goods, and it was also good that we were able to uh, get everybody's uh, property back to them. In Spartanburg County, crooks will always have to deal with gritty officers like Randy Hollifield. Coming right at you. These career criminals got 10 years behind bars to think about all their mistakes. And after 70 burglaries and a high-speed pursuit, they'll have plenty to think about. Protests are fueled by emotions. And when those emotions flare out of control, protests turn into riots. Seoul, South Korea. A peaceful sit-in at Seoul's National University takes a turn for the worse. Disgruntled subway workers protest legislation that jeopardizes thousands of jobs. They're an impressive show of force. But so are the riot police. The angry workers shower the officers with Molotov cocktails. This once quiet protest erupts into a full-scale riot. But the police have even more powerful ways of regaining control. Fighting for their livelihood, the laborers are relentless. The chaos intensifies. Suddenly, innocent people are in peril. The Seoul police use every tool in their arsenal, except deadly force. As the day wears on, the protesters finally wear out. The scene is reduced to rubble, but the riot is over, and it becomes clear that nothing was accomplished today. In South Korea, the struggle for basic human rights is still critical. But in a fight like this, there are no winners. Franklin, Indiana. Almost on the scene, reference to a suspicious vehicle. A man in a red Jeep Cherokee squeals past officers and flies onto city streets. quickly learn the 4x4 is stolen. On top of that, the suspect has several felony warrants spanning across three states. Desperate to stay out of jail, he runs at full throttle. Police immediately make preparations to shut the outlaw down. The felon zips by waiting cruisers. 
He ignores traffic lights. Bullies other motorists. And drives at depth that finds speed. Why? Because he knows where he's going if he's caught. And police are determined to send him there. Officers lay out spikes. They puncture the tires, making the car difficult to control. And then some. Bit. By bit, the stolen Jeep disintegrates along the road. Incredibly, the man keeps on driving. Officers from other precincts join in the chase. Working together, they arrange to stop the suspect once and for all with a second set of spikes. This time, the spikes completely disable the vehicle. He's smoking pretty good. Having nowhere and no way to drive, the man prepares to run. But he didn't count on the lead cruiser to be a canine unit. Now, surrounded and worn out, the man gives up to get away from police. This guy was willing to run to the ends of the earth. But his car wasn't. He's smoking pretty good. He tried to push it to the limit. But when he pushed it too far, his car and his future fell to pieces. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. How fast is too fast? Uh, 100 miles an hour. High throttle bike thieves push it too hard. Ooh, he just about lost it there. A dangerous run pushes his luck. And deputies push right back. It's pedal to the metal action. We're about to crash. Stand by. Next. It's about speed. I'm now behind the motorcycle. It's about danger. When suspects this fast hit the highway, it's about time they learn the consequences. When crooks want to steal a vehicle, a motorcycle may seem like an easy target. But when the action heats up, the guys who steal bikes aren't always prepared to handle them. Kenilworth, Illinois. An officer doesn't realize these two young men are on a stolen motorcycle. But when they take off through a red light, they tip their hand. Hip shoot a motorcycle on westbound. The suspects aren't wearing any safety gear but they refuse to give up their dangerous new toy. When they nearly T-bone an SUV without flinching, officers realize these boys will hold nothing back. They blaze along city streets, blowing past other cars and plowing through red lights. They're willing to violate any traffic law to get away. He's driving really recklessly. Suddenly, the kids take a sharp turn hoping to lose officers in a suburb. Residential streets are like an obstacle course, but the Hellions don't slow down a bit. Suddenly, the street dead ends into a parking lot, and they almost dump the bike. Ooh, he just about lost it there. The suspects had to brake hard to avoid collision. With two of them on board, the cycle is dangerously top-heavy. Luckily for them, they don't wipe out. This time. I'm so safe. They rebound quickly and rumble back onto city streets. Now the suspects are feeling invincible. After blowing one more red light, they turn things up a notch and rocket ahead at over 100 miles an hour. The officers aren't willing to match their speed. Unlike the reckless kids, their concern is public safety. Unfortunately, that means the suspects could be in the next county by now or they could have suffered a far worse fate. Suddenly, the officers round a bend and spot the bike. 10.50. The boys lost control and laid it down on the roadside. 
but amazingly, they're on their feet and running. He's on foot. They tried to disappear into a nearby neighborhood, but the officers nabbed them within minutes. These kids wanted something without having to pay for it. Get a suitable motorcycle on westbound. But when their runaway greed sent them on a rampage, just about lost it there. They nearly paid for it with their lives. Hampton, Georgia. Drug interdiction officer Kevin Thomas pulls over a suspicious vehicle. Stop the vehicle, sir. It looks like the driver is going to comply, but traffic stops on this beat are rarely that easy. Thomas is hardly surprised when the man takes off. I'm in pursuit of this vehicle now. The suspect makes a mad dash to get away. In his haste, he nearly T-bones a cargo truck. This time, it's a near miss. Next time, might be a direct hit. Officer Thomas wisely calls for backup. We got any news on highway patrol or anyone with planes to get in there? Heavy traffic forms a natural roadblock. There's only one way out. The suspect creates his own lane and squirms past the travel. Then it's down a side road. Once again, the roving renegade blazes his own trail. He swings one of the widest U-turns this officer has ever seen. By this time, Officer Thomas has no doubt that the driver is carrying drugs. He's trying too hard to get away. The chase hits a straightaway, and the driver gets a hefty lead. But he's not as lucky as he thinks. Just down the road, Sergeant Ashley Gillum drags a spike strip across the pavement. He has to make sure that the crook hits the spikes and not him. As the man races down the street, the cautious officer tugs the strip. It's a perfect hit. All four tires roll right over the spike strip. Seconds later, the car stops running, but the suspect doesn't. Drugs in hand, he hoofs it down the road. He's bailed out. He thinks he can escape into the woods but it doesn't take long for the police to catch up with him. This guy thought he could get away if he only ran fast enough and hard enough. But thanks to the tag team work of two officers and a trusty spike strip, this drug dealing suspect is staring down a six year sentence. Plenty of time to let him catch his breath. Pinellas County, Florida, 2.30 a.m. When a reckless driver runs a stop sign, a sheriff's deputy takes off after him and immediately calls for backup. If there was any doubt about how dangerous this person is, those doubts disappear when the suspect roars the wrong way up a freeway off-ramp, speeding headlong into oncoming traffic. As I was heading southbound, going towards the actual incident, the suspect vehicle is coming northbound in the southbound lane straight at me. The officers have no time to think, only react. The pursuing deputy slams into the suspect's vehicle. The car spins out of control, and the deputy tries to box it in. We had a lieutenant and a sergeant say, get the vehicle off of the roadway, as we did not want to involve any other citizens. Glass and metal fly off the suspect's car, but his engine still works. This time, the deputies are too fast for him. That was basically rammed the vehicle at the center point, um, causing a T-bone. Once I T-boned the vehicle, that completely stopped it. With the doors blocked, there's only one way this guy's getting out. With only moments to avoid catastrophe, officers had to instinctively fall back on their training. And it wasn't until this high-speed chase ended that deputies got the lowdown on why this wrong way, road raging, bumper crunching renegade wielded this car like a battering ram. I got him in custody almost. He was drunk. Now this public menace is out of the driver's seat and headed straight to the slammer. <laughs> Next, on World's Wildest Police Video, an outrageous chase get it, get it, get it. that tears through three states and just gets faster and faster. 125. Once an officer begins a pursuit, he wants to see it through to the finish. 
So even when a chase threatens to cross the state line, most officers will continue until the suspects are in custody. Columbia, South Carolina. A car rockets ahead of a state trooper at 100 miles an hour. This stolen vehicle was hotwired in Miami. The 18-year-old car thief has already blasted through Florida and Georgia. Officers don't know why the suspect is running. They only know that this has become a multi-state pursuit. Negative, he's driving all over the place. And now the South Carolina state troopers are on his tail. The suspect recklessly weaves around traffic, passing slower cars by driving up on the right shoulder. The daring driver blazes down the highway toward the North Carolina state line. Two unmarked patrol cars join the fever-pitched pursuit. Go, go, go. One of the units moves into position to slow down the speeding felon. The pursuing officer warns him how dangerous the situation really is. A tenacious trooper tries to get close enough to pit the suspect's bumper. But at these speeds, it's just too dangerous. The officer won't risk anyone's life, not even the suspect's. With the state line quickly approaching, North Carolina authorities are on alert. Meanwhile, their South Carolina counterparts step it up a notch. Spike strips are laid across the pavement, and police block traffic on both sides of the highway. All of a sudden, the suspect sees the spikes, but instead of stopping, he floors the accelerator and skids out of control right off the road. When officers reach the twisted wreckage, the suspect is nowhere to be found. Amazingly, he's discovered at a nearby phone booth, making a toll call to his mother. And that's how officers learned why this car thief was headed north. He was hell-bent for a family reunion in New York. No rest stops included. But his plans got derailed. When the South Carolina troopers took him out of his New York state of mind and put him into the Florida State Penitentiary. From zero to a hundred, from a hundred oh, no! to oblivion. When speed becomes a criminal's only friend, whatever gets in the way becomes an enemy. When that happens, this guy's an idiot. All it takes is one officer we need to, take him out here now. to show the bad guys all right, we got him, what a real enemy can be. likes it when justice isn't served. Some people respect the privilege of driving, and some people don't. Pinellas County, Florida. Corporal Richard Nalvin pursues two drunken felons, rocketing their way across town at astonishing speed. He was driving a five-liter high-performance Mustang which was, at the time, really not uh, something that the majority of our cruisers could catch. Within a matter of seconds, the suspects virtually disappear into the traffic up ahead. Corporal Nalvin guns his engine, trying hard to catch up. He spots the Mustang cutting through traffic. The narrow roads and high speeds make it difficult to avoid other drivers. Corporal Nalvin gains momentum, closing the gap between himself and the fleeing men. I got it! The driver uses his blinkers in a bizarre attempt to confuse the corporal. He viciously uses other motorists as rolling roadblocks, but it's not enough to shake this experienced officer. 
Then without warning, the man slams on his brakes. He veers left, then smashes into a parked car. The suspects try to run, but the corporal's men have them surrounded. Freeze, get on the ground! Get on the ground! Uh, you really feel good about uh, catching someone like that. It's something that is worthwhile. In the end, it doesn't matter how fast you drive. If you don't do it legally and soberly, the privilege of driving will turn into a right to remain silent. In a court of law, tensions run high, especially when someone other than a judge tries to deliver justice. Jacksonville, Florida. A child is killed in a drive-by shooting. The boy's killers have been found guilty in await sentencing. In court, the victim's grandmother finally gets her say. She wants the stiffest penalty possible. See where they put him, what it did to him. What happens next is unbelievable. All hell breaks loose. The dead child's father attacks the defendants. Other family members leap into the fray, punching and pounding, even beating a man with an umbrella. It's an explosive situation. Officers and bailiffs risk serious injury, trying to stop this violent free-for-all. But they know they have to break it up fast. With a room full of agitated spectators, this fight could become a riot. Bailiffs pull apart the fighting relatives, and the dead child's father is cuffed, even though officers understand his rage. At last, sheriff's deputies begin to clear the courtroom. For some, this painful day just got much, much worse. Because emotions run high in a court of law, officers have to keep the proceedings under control. But there's only so much they can do. Police can't turn back time, and they can't bring a loved one back to life. All they can do is prevent more violence and keep order in the court. Council Bluffs, Iowa. A Chevy van runs a stop sign. But Harrison and uh, Harmony. But when police try to pull it over, the driver shows he's not stopping for signs or cops. Brown full-size Chevy van. This man has a secret. Not only is he under the influence, northbound on uh, Harrison, he's carrying a concealed weapon. The suspect roars through this quiet neighborhood, a neighborhood he strangely refuses to leave. One now we're heading southbound, Bennett. He makes one right turn after another. He's turning up Harrison again. Going down the same streets over and over. Harrison Morgan going towards Marshall. It's clear this guy needs to stay on familiar turf. But when police start to predict his pattern, he's going to go north on Mr. Spring. He does the unpredictable. Going on to long. In a surprise move, the driver turns left and races down a dark country road. Doing about 60. Picking up speed, the van skirts the shoulder, kicking rocks and debris onto the cruiser. He's almost lost it. Held bent on escape, the driver doesn't see the bend in the road until it's too late. Well, he's 1050. He's 1050. The Chevy nosedives, cartwheels, and comes crashing down. The impact is so violent, it hurls the driver from the car. Looks like he's been ejected. The officer rushes to the suspect's aid, but he knows not to let his guard down. He might be safe here. It turns out the driver truly needs help. He's unconscious. And paramedics rush the suspect away. He's lucky this time. He makes it out alive. What began as a minor traffic stop ended with a ruined van and a ruined man. He's unconscious. A man who made several right turns. Well, he's 1050. He's 1050. And one wrong choice. Coming up. Uh, this is where it gets dangerous. On world's wildest police videos, Road Rage. A madman. He's being real reckless now. Has a bad plan. A reckless team creates a scene. Plus, an innocent driver turns lucky survivor. More law and disorder. Hey, hit the spikes. Just around the corner. A countdown to disaster. Four on the floor. It can be very dangerous here. Two for the road. One for the books. Number of winners, zero.
When you spot a pursuit from a helicopter, you can't tell who's driving or why it all started. All you know is lives are in danger. In Los Angeles, police pursue an armed and dangerous felon who's having a bad day. OK, he's turning northbound now. 24 hours earlier, he was arrested and his van was impounded. When he was freed on bail, the man wanted his van back, but didn't want to pay the fine. We've been told that the man brandished a knife at workers in the tow yard and then stole his own van back. Now, he's wearing a bulletproof vest, armed and ready to do battle. We're coming into some congestion ahead. With traffic slowing to a crawl, officers have to exercise extreme caution. One wrong move, and this unstable hothead could take a hostage. This is very dangerous. Police keep their distance. Uh, this has become a very tense situation. But once the suspect's able to accelerate, his driving takes on a menacing tone. He's just jumping across lanes now. He races through the suburbs and into a quiet neighborhood. CHP now being joined by LA County units. The dangerous fugitive pulls into the driveway of this home, his mother's home. But even mom can't help him out of this situation. He's now getting out of the van. Officers advance with guns drawn. They're prepared for the worst. What happens next surprises everyone. This guy's actually knocking on the door. He may think nothing of terrifying other drivers, but at mom's house, this armed marauder minds his manners. Still, he refuses to surrender. Police will be forced to take him down. Officers fire non-lethal beanbag bullets at the suspect. He goes down. Code four, repeat, code four. Reeling from the beanbags, he's cuffed and taken to jail for the second time in 24 hours. A night behind bars didn't teach this knife-wielding thug any lessons. When he got out, he decided to get even. Did the man brandished a knife at workers in the tow yard? It was a bad decision, because what was a simple tow charge... A very tense situation. ...became serious legal charges. Dallas, North Carolina. An officer pulls a woman over for speeding. I clocked you at 48, and that's the 35 mile an hour zone. When he returns to his motorcycle, a police cruiser stops to make sure that everything's OK. It is, except for the morning chill. Yeah, I'm about to freeze to death. So, can't catch enough. Yeah. A distracted rubbernecker is so busy looking at the officers that he doesn't see what's right in front of him. The woman hopes the officer will cut her some slack. But while the police car pulls up to the accident, the motorcycle officer returns to the speeder and calmly finishes writing the ticket. You can come to court on that day and I'll go from there. Okay. After all, the dangers of driving unsafely on this country road have just become painfully clear. A motorcycle is a beautiful and exciting machine. But if you don't respect its weaknesses, it can be a dangerous ride. Sangamon County, Illinois. A sheriff's deputy pursues a pair of reckless youths on a stolen motorcycle. At these speeds, one false move can mean the difference between life and death. There is no room for air. Foolishly, the suspects run red lights and blast down the wrong side of the road. They have no regard for anyone's life, including their own. Without helmets and wearing shorts, they look like they're dressed for a walk in the park, not a motorcycle ride. Surviving a fall at these speeds would be miraculous. The sheriff's deputies work in sync to corral the suspects, trying to avoid a hazardous accident. Oh, watch out now, let him get you. The nimble motorcycle squirms away, and the cocky driver thinks he's unstoppable. Suddenly, the men attempt to escape down a side street. The cruisers can't keep up on the narrow road. But the authorities are about to get some help from above. Unable to steer on the rain-soaked asphalt, the suspects make their smartest move of the night. They dump the bike and run. Knowing that the area is surrounded, the deputies calmly follow behind, warm and dry in their cruiser. The soaking suspects run right into a sheriff's unit up ahead, where they're arrested for speeding to elude and possession of stolen property. 
These suspects tried everything they could to get away with a stolen motorcycle. But in the end, they couldn't outrun the Sagamon deputies or Mother Nature. Coming up on world's wildest police videos, desperate games. If I can get up there, I'll try to stop them. It's hide and seek. I can smell the butt in there. Leapfrog. Get in front of him, block him off. Charades. I can't tell what it is. Plus tag. I got him, got him. And it's coming right at you. Energy's caution, it's all gravel. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Okay, hit the spikes. Cops curve T. When litter bugs what are, we talking about? are hiding drugs and joyriding kids are on the skids. But grown-up crime gets grown-up time. I can smell the marijuana in the car. Cincinnati, Ohio, 2 a.m. A suspected drunk driver refuses to stop. The closer police get, the faster this suspect runs. Copy, 10 forward. Back up and round. He jumps from lane to lane, dangerously weaving back and forth, ready to cut off anyone trying to pass. Suddenly, he jets across open lanes, tears up an off-ramp, and plunges into downtown. The early morning streets might look empty, but police still have to be alert for oncoming drivers or pedestrians, especially with a suspect this reckless on the loose. The suspected drunk blows around two innocent motorists, careening blindly around one corner after another. When the officer catches up here, he discovers the man driving on the sidewalk. He careens back onto the street, makes one turn too many, and slams sideways into the curb. The impact disables the car's front axle, bringing this mad dash to a grinding halt. When he refuses to surrender, police are forced to take him down. As it turns out, this hard-charging DUI suspect wasn't drunk at all. He was just a 15-year-old kid who snuck out of his house to go joyriding in his uncle's car. Hiding information from an officer is never a good idea. They're going to find out anyway, but no officer enjoys being lied to. Shawnee County, Kansas. Sheriff's deputies stop two teens on suspicion of littering. Hello. Well, we thought you guys threw something out the window over there. What were you tossing out? The driver denies the charge. No, we didn't throw nothing out. OK. But that's not the only thing the deputies are curious about. When we pulled up behind you guys, he's moving all around. and. What, uh, you guys hiding something under the seat up there? No. No? Don't have no weed or nothing like that in the car? No. No? The deputy then asks for permission to search the car. Want well, to go ahead and take a look under the seat? Is that all right? There, if there's just a little person you stuff, just cough it up, and we'll get, you on, we'll get you guys back on the road. The girl hesitates. That's OK? That's OK? Do you have to? I, I, don't, I don't have to. My problem is, when I pull up, Looks like he's stuffing something under the seat, all right? If there's nothing under there, we'll get you guys back on the road, okay? They finally consent, and the deputies begin searching the vehicle. It's not long before something turns up. I can say, I can smell a little bit. The teens claim there are no drugs in the car, but the deputies sense otherwise. I can smell the bud in there. When was marijuana smoked in there? Still, the pair refused to come clean. You just got a joint or two, a quarter or a half. We've got other things out here that we're worried about, all right? Then the deputy's suspicions are confirmed. He finds a small amount of marijuana in the passenger's door. Without warning, the young man latches onto the deputy's arm. It takes both officers to wrestle him to the ground. I'm trying to be The driver stands by stunned as her boyfriend is placed in handcuffs. For a little yeah, freaking a little bit of weed. You went through all that. The deputies now have every reason to believe the teens are hiding more. They search the rest of the car. Wait, what did, what did we tell you? Did you hear yeah, what we said? A little personal use. 
pop it up, and we'll send you down the road. That's all we got. Sorry I did that. I was just paranoid because I'm on probation. Clean up. Finding nothing else, they discuss what their next move will be. What do you want to do with him, dude? This teen is about to get the surprise of his life. This is what we're inclined to do. He should probably go to jail for uh, obstruction. are amazed. The deputies will simply inform the boy's probation officer without piling on extra charges. You guys hide something under the seat up there? No. no. Today, these teens learned a valuable lesson. You can smell the blood. Hey, don't that stress Be straight with the police. Wait, hey, what, what did we tell you? And they'll be straight with you. We've got other things out here that we're worried about, all right? to the great equalizers in a police pursuit. No tire on the road can stand up to this kind of torture. Bone Steel, South Dakota. Highway Patrol Trooper Jeff Lanning plays a critical role during a pursuit in progress. While his colleagues chase a driver in a stolen truck, Lanning scrambles to get ahead and set down spike strips. Moments later, Hey, it's the spikes! He pulls the spikes away so the police cruisers can follow. He rejoins the pursuit, only to learn that his job isn't over yet. Still got two uh, tires up on the back. Luckily, this native trooper could drive these back roads with his eyes closed. He takes a shortcut and once again positions the spikes. Okay, he got him again. A stream of patrol cars follows. The officer is confident that the suspect will slow down, but he doesn't. Looks like you only got one back tire. Enough. Three tires down, one to go. Again, Lanny leapfrogs the pursuit and gets ready to throw the spikes down. This time, when the driver hits the strip, he glares at the spike-wielding trooper. Yeah, he just shook his head. By now, the hobbled truck is running on rims, but the suspect still refuses to stop. Four flat. He's just looking for a place to run, I think. <laughs> what you are about to see is unbelievable. When the officers force the driver into the dirt, Lanning has to throw it into reverse to avoid getting hit by the angry suspect. The suspect floors it. Metal rims grind into dirt, somehow finding traction. The trooper spins away just in time. When he turns around, his partners have the suspect under control. This arrogant truck thief thought he could slip into the back roads and get away. But thanks to a heads-up trooper with a trusty spike strip, the crook's escape plans went flat. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, criminals are ducking and dodging when a teller cancels a check. A rebel... And you gonna tell me I wasn't doing the speed limit? ...creates his own cause. And a driver tries running on empty. Stop the car now. Next. <laughs> ducks the bucket. And thrill-seeking teens... Down the ditch. ...go down for the count. 1050, 1050, he's up running. A domestic dispute is always a tough situation for an officer, especially when it involves a young child. Post Falls, Idaho. An officer has been called to this driveway for an unusual domestic dispute. This woman was warming up the family sedan to take her children to school. But her eight-year-old son did not want to go. Instead, he locked himself inside the idling car, and he refuses to budge. His mother and the officer plead with the boy to get out, but he won't listen. He taunts the grown-ups by toying with the gear shift and the pedals. If provoked, he could crash the car into the house or back up into the patrol cruiser. The officer pulls his cruiser up close to the sedan. He wants to give it as little room as possible to gain momentum. Next, he tries to jimmy the lock. The kid continues to play with the gear shift. Suddenly, he finds reverse. Without the patrol car blocking his way, he would have rolled straight down the hill behind him. The only direction left to go now is forward right into the house. The officer hurries up with the lock. 
Just as he starts to open the door, the boy punches the gas. Thankfully, the kid sensed he was going too far and hit the brake. But that doesn't mean this pint-sized rebel is ready to give up completely. It takes both the officer and the mother to pry the kid out of the car. Days later, the boy will send his apology to the Post Falls PD. He will explain his misbehavior by saying he was just having a bad day. But in the meantime, he'll be serving hard time in the one place he never wanted to be, school. Seoul, South Korea. With plenty of money on hand and no bulletproof glass to protect them, the tellers in this bank have to respond quickly when they see anything suspicious. For instance, this guy who enters wearing a motorcycle helmet. As he rummages through his bag, the women share a look. This guy could be trouble. The tellers reach into cubby holes in front of them. They have a hidden defense against robbers, a special gun filled with pepper spray. But how will that stop someone who's wearing a helmet? This guy thought of everything, except closing his face mask. Suddenly, he attacks. One teller sprays him in the eyes. The disoriented robber flails at her wildly and reveals his weapon. It's a fake gun. The second teller leaps to the rescue, clubbing the robber with anything she can get her hands on. The overmatched thief beats a hasty retreat, empty-handed and humiliated. Just like that, this robbery attempt is over. It's always dangerous to tangle with a crook. But when this novice robber tried to make an early withdrawal, these feisty tellers dealt out the penalty. In Sangamon County, Illinois, Four teenagers escape from Juvenile Hall in a stolen car. Police are hot on their tail. The Pontiac rockets down the freeway at speeds in excess of 115 miles an hour. Even a semi doesn't slow them down. As the juvenile jailbirds veer around it in the emergency lane. Weaving in and out of truck traffic. Officers could take drastic measures to stop this chase but they don't want to harm these kids. However, when the terrorizing teen behind the wheel intentionally swerves at a police unit, officers have to clamp down. He's being real reckless now. With another cruiser joining the chase, police show they mean business, but the dangerous delinquents won't give up. Instead, they jerk the steering wheel to the right, sideswiping the nearest police unit. Incredibly, the cruiser holds the road. Yeah, the cruiser was another vehicle. Now these kids are in serious legal trouble. Police are determined to take them down fast. The cruisers form a rolling blockade to box in the bad boys. Trapped and panicking, the driver cuts to the left and rumbles down the shoulder. The Pontiac blasts over the median, hurls across oncoming traffic, and crashes into a ditch. The driver bails out and hides in some nearby cornfields. He's arrested the next day, but his passengers are busted on the spot. Despite their legal troubles, these careless kids got off easy. Their highway hijinks could have resulted in serious injury or even death. Yeah, real reckless now. Because they're minors, they didn't end up in the state pen. But if they keep committing adult crime, they'll eventually do adult time. Next, on world's wildest police videos, a back-talking bad boy Five miles over the speed limit. fights the law. You didn't have on your radar detector. And the law fights back. Often, police are criticized for being overly aggressive. Uh, sometimes officers seem angry or on edge, but chances are they're merely being cautious. Mount Vernon, Illinois. The man in this maroon sedan is having some trouble going the speed limit. And even more trouble stopping. He bumps along rural side streets, going through one barricade and then another. Finally, he pulls his car to the side of the road, the wrong side of the road. 
Suddenly, the suspect lunges from his car and charges the police cruiser. Fearing for his safety, the officer draws his gun. He tries to explain why he stopped the man. Clock is speeding back there on Broadway. I need to see your driver's license. Click on my driver's license right here. The suspect soon works himself into a fury. Five miles over the speed limit. Five miles. Five. And you gonna tell me I wasn't doing the speed limit? Caught in his own contradiction, the suspect tries another angle. Okay, why my radar detector didn't pick up? Cause you didn't have on your radar detector. That's why. So how the f did you clock me at 50 miles if you didn't have it? The angry man defiantly walks away. Y'all think I'm gonna stop you, y'all? Anytime y'all get behind me, I'm gonna keep on driving. You gonna have to follow me into action. Backup arrives, and now it's the officer's turn to talk. This is a laser gun. Your radar detector will not pick it up. 56 mile an hour. Right there it is. That's why your radar detector didn't go off. Because of his conduct, that's why. He gives one final note before all hell breaks loose. Can you do it, Jim? Yes. The suspect refuses to go quietly. He leads officers on a furious chase, but is arrested only moments later. In this case, the danger was obvious. Unfortunately, things aren't always so clear cut. An officer needs to constantly be on alert. They never know what's going to happen from one minute to the next. Down in Austin, Texas, a man is driving erratically. Trooper Earl Gilliam runs the driver's plates. But they come back clean. The suspect slows to a crawl and eventually stops. Gilliam waits for the man to turn off his engine, but he never does. He toys with the trooper, first decelerating, then speeding away. After a long game of cat and mouse, he decides to pull over. Trooper Gilliam wastes no time approaching the pickup. He is prepared to write the man a ticket and send him on his way, but he never gets the chance. The officer is hit three times and left for dead. Each second is more critical than the last. Passing motorists realize the trooper needs their help. Horrified, they use Gilliam's radio to call for assistance. Paramedics arrive just in time. Thanks to the efforts of Good Samaritans, the trooper's life is saved. The suspect was not so lucky. He was fatally wounded the next night when he tried to kill another cop. Police put their lives on the line every day. They don't want to come across as being touchy or impolite. But most officers would much rather get the situation under control than face the consequences of having no control at all. Just hold your breath here for a second. Crooks are motivated by easy money or the thrill of the moment. But crime comes with a cost. See where they put him. And as long as crooks are running, hiding, Drop the gun. and lying, don't tell me I wasn't doing the speed limit. Police will be there. Don't move. To see the criminals pay. He's even grateful to the officers. He actually extended his arm at the hospital and wanted to shake my hand and thank him for not killing him. Standoffs can turn deadly with one pull of a trigger, but police are working harder than ever to preserve lives. 
and make sure these armed suspects live to stand trial. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Pursuit of a speeding drunk driver. He swerves wildly around other cars to keep the officer at bay, then rockets ahead at 100 miles per hour. A dangerous speed, especially when making a hasty exit. Close call, but this drunk doesn't learn from his mistakes. Seconds later, he charges through a red light. The driver narrowly misses an oncoming vehicle as he skids into the opposite lane. Now things get even worse. The suspect tears down the winding two-lane road. Suddenly, he passes traffic on a blind curve, swerving away from an unapproaching car and sideswiping a vehicle in his own lane. Amazingly, the suspect stays well ahead of the officer. When he tries his next maneuver on a dirt road, he finally loses ground. Literally. The car skids up into a bank, flips over, then spins on its roof like a top. The suspect is lucky to survive this wild chase. Swerving. driver tempted fate one time too many and turned his whole life upside down. Coming up Hang on. on world's wildest police videos, you push comes to shove. Daredevil drivers push cars to the limit. An AWOL soldier pushes speed to the max. And savage kidnappers push danger to the brink. The lines are drawn. The gloves are off. The cops are pushing back. Next. This car's back on fire, man. Criminals try it all. Drive the gun! They try to run. They try to push. They even try to fight. But the harder they try, Drop the gun! The harder they fall. Richmond Hill, Georgia. The man on this speedy bike is a soldier stationed at a nearby base. He fears that if he's caught, his military career could be in serious jeopardy. The pursuit is fast and furious. The suspect drives like a lunatic, about 120 and a 45. making it nearly impossible for police to keep up. But the officers and military police are one step ahead. They set up a roadblock across the highway. As the bike approaches the barricade, the suspect starts to pull to the side of the road, but the driver doesn't stop. He suddenly throttles up, and like evil Knievel, he blows right past the stunned officers. Once again, he's off and running, careening down the highway. He's hell on wheels. Then the biker suddenly switches gears and races toward the army base, where military police attempt to catch the daredevil driver. He just ran a roadblock over school. I can't read the signs. We're going this fast. As police close in, the suspect tries to push the limits further. And even the best driver can push it too far. He takes the corner a little too fast and hits the pavement. Although he was arrested, this easy rider escaped hard time. In an ironic twist, superior officers gave the expert biker a more fitting punishment, teaching a class in motorcycle safety. Anyone can be taken hostage, children, adults, even cops.
but when emotions run hot and danger runs high, hostage negotiators like Captain Bill Young keep the chaos under control. The difference between a police officer and a police officer who's a negotiator is that the success of this situation depends on your ability to not let your emotions get away from you. Your role in this situation is to be that calming influence. Tragedy strikes in Chicago. After an argument with his wife, this knife-wielding man holds his infant daughter hostage. The disturbed father is on the edge of doing the unthinkable. It's time for a negotiator. When you're dealing with somebody that's violent and dangerous, you've got to direct his thought processes to something more positive. The negotiator brings the man's wife to the scene. He responds with fury. Seeing the mother of his child only sends him into a rage. He begins cutting the clothes off the helpless child and throwing debris at the police. The officers have to get the wife out of there before her husband's frenzy turns deadly. The negotiator gives the order to back off. What we're trying to remove is the police versus the suspect situation. And by the time Don comes, the man is tired and calm enough to talk. The negotiator gains his trust, allowing the man to write his own version of how things happened. One of the things that the hostage negotiator is trying to do is establish a trust or some type of bond with that hostage taker. While officers get in position, the negotiator convinces the distraught father to release his innocent child. Finally, the man drops his weapon. But until he surrenders the child, officers must keep everyone back, including the mother. The man gives the child to an officer. Only then can the cops move in and arrest him. OK, suspect, code four, code four, suspect in custody. We got him. The baby is safe and no one is hurt. It's a testament to the negotiator's skill and patience. Time is your friend. The longer that a negotiation takes, the more likely it's going to end in a peaceful solution. In Rhode Island, it's a hostage situation with a twist. The hostage is a cop. The police officer in the brown jacket was ambushed by an armed bank robber. Now he's looking down the barrel of his own gun. You've got to be extremely careful. You've got to be very dedicated. And you've got to be entirely focused on a situation when you're negotiating. It's nearly impossible for the officer to remain passive. But it's also the most important thing he can do. The fugitive bank robber maneuvers toward a car. For the negotiator, this is unacceptable. As a hostage negotiator, you can't allow the suspect to leave the scene with the hostage. The gunman refuses to talk. He's been on driving away with the cop as his insurance, but he's made more than one mistake in judgment. If I was a hostage taker, I would much rather have an, an innocent young victim rather than a hardened police officer as my hostage. The suspect has now forced the cops to stop talking and start acting. And then it happens. A sniper sees a clear shot. After a storm of gunfire, there is finally silence. But in slow motion, it's clear what's happened. A police sharpshooter sees an opening and fires. It's the moment the officers are waiting for. They rush the car before the hostage taker can react. The captive officer takes a bullet in the hand, but he's able to get away. The wounded cop is rushed to the hospital. This deadly situation is finally over. If you get called to a situation where the suspect is killed or may kill again shortly, you've got to be prepared to go to a tactical solution very quickly. Some hostage takers will listen to reason. Others only understand force and fear. But hostage negotiators like Bill Young will see these situations through to the end, one way or another. Well, being a hostage negotiator is the most satisfying and rewarding work I've ever done in my 20-year career as a police officer. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video, this is where the danger starts. Put your hands on the car. Where hardcore punks seek a deadly thrill. Where ordinary cops pursue extraordinary crooks. It's death defying. Got a gun, got a gun. 
mind-blowing, full-throttle action. Next. When the danger's real, when the stakes are high, when there's no turning back, that's when the law puts it all on the line. He's got a gun. Street racers think it's cool to turn roads into their own personal speedways. But for every driver who wins a street race, there are those who end up winning a trip to the hospital. In Brazil, illegal street races have reached a new level of danger. Young men try to outdo each other with high-speed maneuvers. They burn rubber, thrilling the crowds that form around these spontaneous road shows. But what they don't realize is that these moves can be dangerous and deadly, even for the most skilled expert drivers. On test tracks around the world, law enforcement agencies spend hours in special vehicles, learning to perfect extreme driving techniques. But even for these experts, disaster is only an engine rev away. Thanks to safety restraints, the driver is fine. But what if this kind of crash happened only inches away from helpless bystanders? Police rush to stop these races, but they're at a disadvantage because these amateur daredevils will always run off and start up again wherever they find a crowd. This mix of adrenaline, gasoline, and mob mentality is a recipe for destruction. One minute the crowd is cheering, the next they're diving for their lives. Standing in the path of the car, this spectator is lucky he didn't lose a leg. Not everyone is that lucky. Another day, another wild crowd cheering for the automotive acrobat. With every near miss, the young spectators feed off the danger. One man decides to join in. He opens the door and jumps into the black sedan. Hanging out the window, he shows off for the crowd. But the hot dogging goes too far. The driver pushes the car beyond its limits. The results are tragic. The passenger tumbles out as the car rolls. We can't show you everything, but the catastrophe is clear. Even the experts know that speed kills. But when teens high on adrenaline treat their cars like toys, lives can be lost with one turn of the wheel. Forest City, Arkansas. This is Officer Jackie Clark of the Arkansas State Police. Get your hands over your head. He works a notorious stretch of highway known to drug runners as the Midnight Express. If I see a hand, I'm gonna get scared, okay? I don't wanna get scared. Chasing down and busting smugglers has made Clark a living legend in these parts. Just outside Forest City, Clark stops his station wagon for speeding. Suddenly, the driver floors him. Clark gives chase as other troopers join the pursuit. He tries to get closer, but the suspect sends a clear warning. Desperate for a way out, the driver spots an exit. Clark barrels through the median to stay in pursuit. The suspect tries to double back, nearly smashing Clark head on. The suspect lunges towards another exit, then swerves back on the highway. But no matter what he tries, he can't shake Officer Clark. The driver has no choice but to call it quits. Catching a smuggler on the run requires high-speed skill. But knowing how to spot a drug runner requires a trained eye and years of experience. Clark and his partner, Joe Williams, have stopped this truck for tailgating. The two men inside claim to be on their way back from a fishing trip. But the troopers notice that their fishing and camping gear looks clean, unused. Something's not right. The troopers search the truck, but come up empty. Williams tries to open the tailgate. But it's a new truck, so he decides to take a closer look. 
he notices that the back plate has been loosened and replaced. The suspects step back, exchanging nervous look. Williams pries the plate back and looks inside. Whatever that white powder is, it's not factory issue. Put your hands on the hood of the car. Uh -huh. Put your hands on the hood of the car. The troopers start to take the men into custody, but suddenly the driver panics. Stop! Stop! You gotta stop! Williams gives chase, while Clark handcuffs the passenger and pulls him into a field. Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Okay, okay. Get now! Okay. The driver wisely gives up. But the suspects are returned and taken into custody. Thanks to their attention to detail, these troopers made a big bust. They took two kilos of high-grade cocaine and two drug runners off the street. But even a living legend like Jackie Clark has days he'd rather forget. Usually a speeder like this would be facing a big fine, but not this time. I'll tell you what I do, I'll knock you a warning, you give me a ride over in my headquarters. The reason for his generosity, I like my keys in my car. The guys at the station will never let him live this down, but Officer Clark knows how to laugh at himself. Intuition, dedication, and determination. Officer Jackie Clark uses all three to keep the pressure on drug runners. So criminals beware. You'll have many more days like this than days like this. I like my keys in my car. Drop the gun! You get that money out. Coming up. Block him in, block him in. On world's wildest police video. Put your hands on the car. The heat is on. This thing's gonna blow. As a drunk driver, Burns up the pavement. A blazing chase rockets down back roads. And outlaws packing heat. Hey, 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 1080, 1080, 1080. Ignite a standoff. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. Blistering pursuits. Furious firefight. It's hot. It's next. Hey, 1080, 1080, 1080. Put chairs on the car. This thing's gonna blow. Out distanced on the highway. Out gunned on the street. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. Drop the gun! Out of time in a chase. Whenever crooks go out of control, cops go out on a limb. The South may appear to be quiet, but it has its own unique problems. Here in Camden County, Georgia, the police were trained to deal with every kind of crime and every type of criminal under the sun. And sometimes, it gets very dangerous. Come on, your hands up! Drop the gun! Do not move! We brought our crew to Georgia to see for ourselves. Block him in, block him in! What we found were some unusual crimes. Shoot me! Shoot me! And some unusual police work. Just north of the Florida border, Camden County sees heavy traffic from Interstate 95. There are thousands of visitors every year, and some of those visitors bring trouble. Put hands on the car. Don't put hands on, put hands on the car. Hey. Are you for rest? Get out of the car. Sheriff's deputies train constantly, using real life scenarios that push their skills to the limit. Hey, 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 1080, 1080, 1080. Because when the danger is real, and things go wrong. Go get him, Jason, go get him! Officers can die. Here, a Camden deputy pulls a driver over for speeding. It should be a routine traffic stop. Hey, Dutch, I need to see your driver's license, please. But a background check reveals the driver is an ex-convict, wanted for parole violation. On top of that, the car is stolen. Camden, Go, Ken. Additional sheriff's deputies arrive on the scene. They quickly move into position. They stand ready as the suspect gets out of his car. At first, he seems to be cooperating. Let me see hands. But then... He's got a gun, he's got a gun! The deputies have no choice but to return fire.
the gunfire stopped. Give me an ambulance down here. The police always try to avoid the use of lethal force. But when a suspect opens fire, officers do what's necessary to defend themselves. In Georgia, like everywhere else, theft and robbery can be a problem. But one of the things the police train for here is faster response time. And that can mean bad news for the crooks. In this pawn shop robbery, the crazed gunman thinks he's in total control of the situation. You get that money out. Put it back. The gunman doesn't realize the clerks have tripped a silent alarm. By the time he leaves, Camden officers have already been alerted. All units, all units, please be advised. We have a 1090 in progress, PNC pawn shop. 14, 17, 10, 20. The robber gets only a few blocks before deputies track him down. Block him in, block him in. The suspect is like an animal, running on instinct. Get on the ground, get on the ground. But the deputies aren't letting this wild man get away. Watch the guns. Get on He's going straight to prison. A smart move by store clerks and a quick response by Camden deputies block him in, block him have in. turned a dangerous crime into a textbook takedown. But some takedowns can't go perfectly. Not when the suspects themselves are bent on destruction. In another insane pursuit, a gang of teenage car thieves makes off with a stolen vehicle. Two of the suspects have outstanding warrants. Blue and color four tour. Blue four tour, occupied five times. Camden deputy Larry Taylor stays on their bumper. He hopes the thieves will wise up. But these carjacking juveniles show no regard for human life. They push it past a hundred narrowly missing other vehicles. The skilled deputy hugs the road and hits the accelerator. He's not letting them get away. The chase becomes a dogfight on the open highway. Weaving through lanes, riding the shoulder, they fly past traffic like it's standing still. A second deputy gets in front of them, hoping to slow the pursuit down. To regain the lead, the suspects pass a mobile home on the right but the move forces them onto an exit ramp. Getting off of that file. Getting off of that file. Deputies now realize the only way to take these guys down is to take them out completely. Deputy Taylor waits for just the right moment. performs the difficult maneuver with total precision. It knocks out the suspect vehicle, but the deputy maintains control. 1050, Cam. 1050, how many squad are out? 1018. Some of the suspects are ejected during the crash, but thanks to the soft grass, no one is seriously hurt. These Florida car thieves thought they could outrun the Camden deputies. Hang on. Now they know better. But they had to find out the hard way. Coming up. We got another person out there somewhere. On world's wildest police video. A drunken suspect leads police down the path of destruction. Next. When a person commits a crime, they risk going to jail. But when they commit a crime and choose to run, they're risking a fate a whole lot worse than prison. Yukon, Oklahoma. Police try to stop this man on suspicion of DUI. Speeding in excess of 90 miles an hour, the suspect weaves across the center line and skids into the shoulder. As the suspect approaches a busy area, more backup joins in. Some of the officers race ahead to block intersections. 
They need to keep innocent motorists away from this suspect's path. Even drivers who see this pursuit coming don't have time to get out of the way. Reaching open road, the suspect guns it to 130. Then he blows a tire. But he still shows no signs of stopping. Another driver pulls into the right lane, trying to avoid the chase. The suspect sideswipes him. The innocent motorist is not hurt, but the suspect loses control of his vehicle. A hubcap shoots from the wheel as the vehicle flies toward oncoming traffic. Pursuing officers are sprayed with debris. At 80 miles an hour, the suspect shoots across the median in two lanes of traffic. He crashes into the trees on the far side. The officers pull up to the accident site. We're at 66 about County Line Road by the Lake Overholster here. But the danger and insanity of this chase are far from over. The engine has caught fire. Double check, see a fire rescue, Yeah, she just advised in round. An officer smashes the window. But the occupants have been thrown clear. 1257 headquarters, so far we've got one occupant. It's been ejected, she's on the bank here. Suddenly, the engine erupts into a ball of fire. This car is back on fire, man. Tell them to hurry up, this thing I want to blow up on me. The officer's small extinguishers can hardly keep it in check. Dang, we gotta get her out of here, this thing's gonna blow. But firefighters arrive before the flames can reach the fuel tank. Arena says there are two people the in the The passenger car. is carried to safety, but the driver is still missing. He may be hiding or trying to escape on foot. We got another person out there somewhere. But how could he recover so quickly after such a horrible accident? I think he's in the river. Divers began searching the creek. The next afternoon, they found his body. This is a warning to anyone who sees the bright lights of the law behind them. No matter what you've done, pull over. If you've committed a crime, you may be punished. But if you run, you could lose everything. Block him in, block him in. Put your hands on the car. The impulse that just says run. The spark. Drop the gun. That ignites the flame. This thing's gonna blow. The fuel that feeds the fire. You got a gun, you got a gun. And when it all goes wrong, it's up to police. See, in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops, real crooks, real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress, from impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. The presence of cameras at crime scenes is as widespread as crime itself. Every day we get more and more footage of crime from police, news, and viewers like yourselves. Some of the clips are terrifying. Others are totally bizarre. But they're all real. And they all have something to teach us. So get ready. You're about to get a camera's eye view of the war on crime. Atlanta, Georgia. Just a few minutes ago, the owner of this red car went shopping. 
and left her keys in the ignition. The person driving the car now is not that owner. He's a car thief, and so far he and his accomplice have left police in their high-speed wake. A couple of DeKalb County police cruisers have uh, joined in the chase at this point, and the, uh, the driver of this... The powerful cruisers quickly surround the stolen vehicle. But dead ahead are two slow-moving big rigs. To prevent a pileup, the officers have to back away from the suspects. Moments later, a state trooper tries to box the suspects in. The driver slams on his brakes, then slams on the gas to get around the trooper and exit the freeway. He's getting off at Memorial Drive at this point. I can't imagine doing that. That's a heavily traveled road in this area. The suspects blitz down the center lane headed toward another packed intersection. He's coming up on a uh, traffic light with many cars. So it looks like he's headed toward... The driver simply jumps the curb and keeps running. Memorial. Luckily, there were no pedestrians in his path. This time... We're approaching Memorial Drive and Columbia Drive. That's a heavily traveled intersection. Pursuing officers can't let this chase continue. Dogging the suspect's every move is State Trooper Gary Sharpton. We're certainly not done with this chase of yet. Trooper Sharpton is a chase expert. In fact, he trains other troopers in the pit maneuver, the pursuit intervention technique. If anyone can end this chase, he can. But there are risks. First, he has to get close enough. Then he has to wait for the perfect moment when it's safe. Here we go again on this sidewalk. The suspects cut through a gas station. Trooper Sharpton sees his chance. He goes for it. Him out. It's a textbook pit maneuver. They're immediately boxed in by other units. The officers move in, leaping onto the suspect's car. Because the driver's door is jammed, they have to yank him out through the window. They give him no chance to flee on foot. Two other officers rush in to assist. Within moments, both suspects are in custody. But the driver is still defiant even proud. I brought, I brought some excitement to this town. These two-bit car thieves ran hard and ran fast, risking everything. There you go. Uh, joined in. And endangering everyone on the road. But because of this perfectly executed pit maneuver, they're now behind bars. For pursuing officers, it was a lesson taught by a master and how to terminate a pursuit flawlessly. Red Bank, Tennessee. Minutes after a brutal robbery, police spot a possible getaway car. Okay, it's gonna be a white Dodge Diplomat. I believe it's gonna be occupied with two black males. We'll be getting out with this vehicle about the 40, 600 block of big Boulevard. Backup units arrive as the driver slows down on the shoulder. Suddenly, he rockets off. Okay, and the speedometers begin to climb. This suspect believes his best weapon is speed. The police aren't about to let him get away. They start closing in on his left, but the driver hammers down the accelerator, roaring through tranquil streets at 70 miles an hour. He cuts across the roadway in a shower of gravel. Then he hits the curb, almost losing control. But it doesn't even slow him down. He jets away again, headed for a freeway on-ramp. As traffic starts to pick up, so do the speeds. Chase hits an upward curve. He pushes the powerful Dodge to 110. Then it happens. Police fear the worst, but amazingly, the suspect jumps out unscathed and takes off on foot. Police pull their guns, ready for anything. At these speeds, it's incredible that the Dodge stayed in one piece. But the devastating crash only pumps the suspect's adrenaline. 
he bails and makes a beeline toward the woods. But he's no match for the Red Bank PD. It's only moments before he's taken down. This high-speed suspect thought he could outrun the law. He believed if he kept accelerating, nothing could stop him. But all it took was one wrong move. And that speed almost cost him his life. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. The insanity of high-speed pursuits. A crazed woman goes on the warpath. A lunatic thief makes his own path. And a brain-dead biker winds up on the path to jail. They're pathological. Something just jumped off the bridge. They're pathetic. I didn't commit a crime. They're next. Back up on the way. When the choice is clear, between right and wrong, between lies and reality, between life and death, he's going to take someone out. Which side will you be on? Any officer will tell you there's no such thing as a good pursuit, but there's a million ways a pursuit can go bad. Burlington, North Carolina. A half hour ago, the woman driving this white pickup wasn't a criminal. She was just a person whose ATM card wouldn't work. The woman snapped, and she robbed the next people in line at the cash machine with a pair of scissors. Now she's a felon, on the run and out of control. At high speed, the suspect spins wildly, but it doesn't convince her to stop. Instead, the woman nearly rams a police car. And then she speeds off with an officer trying to hang on to her door. The police stay in pursuit as the suspect runs stop signs, blows through red lights, and uses a crowded cross street to suddenly change direction. Although this may be her first time running from the police, the woman is driving like a hardened criminal. But like all crooks, she makes a mistake. Quickly, the officers coordinate their actions. The suspect spins again. But this time, the police are ready. One officer delivers a jarring hit that kills the truck's engine. The truck is out of commission. The suspect is out of options. And the police are out of patience. It's over. Anyone can have a bad day. But when this woman resorted to armed robbery and evading the police, her bad day turned into 19 months behind bars. When you're trying to understand how the criminal mind works, you have to remember that what we call the truth and what crooks consider the truth can be two entirely different things. Norman, Oklahoma. For the last three weeks, a lone gunman has terrorized local convenience stores. He's about to strike again. The suspect approaches the counter with a six-pack in one hand and a gun in the other. The clerk wisely gives up the cash. The suspect starts to leave, but issues a final warning. The crook jumps in a car and speeds off. How much you get? Police respond minutes later. Do you have them on video? Thanks to this security video, they were able to identify and arrest this man. His interrogation gives us a revealing glimpse into the criminal mind. To hear him tell it, you think he was trying to borrow the money. I just asked him, I said, could you give me the 20s and the 10s? Mm -hmm. He tries to deny being armed. I, asked him, I didn't say nothing about no gun. He tries to deny intimidating the clerk at all. 
Then officers reveal they have the tape that shows everything. Well, I got the video tape. Why did you know Trapped in his own lies and caught on video, this crook is now serving hard time for armed robbery. In Spartanburg, South Carolina, a man is passing bad checks at a bank while his getaway driver waits outside. When Deputy Randy Hollifield arrives, the suspects are already leaving. Check fraud is generally a low-profile crime. But when the suspects flee in this blue sedan, things get high-profile in a hurry. The blue, light blue Chevrolet Caprice. Deputy Hollifield quickly calls for backup. As he races over slick, wet pavement in hot pursuit. The deputy is just trying to stay close, but the fleeing fraud artists turn this chase into a deadly game of chicken. Without an ounce of caution, the driver whips into oncoming lanes, daring the deputy to follow. It's a risk Hollyfield can't take. But once the traffic clears, he punches the accelerator. When the deputy catches up, the suspects bolt onto the highway. 85 southbound, 85 southbound. But Hollyfield makes sure they know he's still on their tail. Running scared, the driver pulls off the highway. So I'm going to get on 26 westbound. Slipping and skidding right around traffic on the crowded off-ramp. Even on dry roads, their driving would be reckless. But on wet pavement, Deputy Hollyfield knows that this pursuit is just one skid away from disaster. Still, the deputy cannot make a move until backup arrives. Finally, another unit responds. Now the odds are in Hollyfield's favor. And he wastes no time taking the blue sedan off the road. The deputy performs a textbook maneuver on the Caprice, disabling the sedan. With one hand on his mace and the other on his gun, Hollowfield orders the female driver to exit the car. suspects are arrested and taken to jail. The evidence is still in the car. It's a bag full of fraudulent checks. These crooks will pay their debts in the county jail. On a rainy day in Spartanburg, things got wet and wild. But Deputy Randy Hollifield stayed patient until it was time to act. On world's wildest police video, losers and liars. You're under arrest, Pat. You're wrong. What are they thinking? A sneaky dealer thinks he's pulling a fast one. A drunk driver thinks he's unstoppable. And a pushy princess thinks the law doesn't apply to her. But if they think they're getting away with anything, back up on the way. They better think twice. This way, this way. Just jumped off the bridge. What can you expect from suspects who drink and drive? Who lie and cheat? Ain't nobody had no marijuana. Who hit and run? This? Come on, your hands up. This? You better get out of And definitely this. Manning, South Carolina. Officers pursue a vehicle that's been reported stolen. He lies with the vehicles wanted for. Light traffic on a two-lane straightaway means only one thing, speed. High on adrenaline, the suspect hammers down the throttle. He whips onto the shoulder. For him, any open lane is a passing lane. He's not letting anything slow him down. He veers around a semi and into the sights of a waiting patrol unit. Still northbound. Other drivers wisely move to the right as the chase blazes by. But some don't move fast enough. He crashes between motors, nearly jackknifing a lumbering pickup in a trailer. Deputies are forced to slow down as the suspect barrels on. 
Up ahead, two truckers anticipate the approaching pursuit. They have a plan. The big rigs pull alongside each other, creating a 36-wheel roadblock. The suspect swerves to avoid them and loses control. We need an ambulance out here. Drivers who only seconds ago were scrambling to avoid the suspect now pull over to help. The man is seriously injured and is quickly taken to the nearest hospital. Officers try to end high-speed pursuit safely, but sometimes a desperate suspect is just too reckless for a chase to end any other way but this. When dealing with suspects, officers may appear to be friendly and relaxed, but in reality, their minds are processing every single detail they see and hear. Milledgeville, Georgia. Officer Keith Fitzgerald is giving this woman a warning for driving erratically. If you got your driver's license with you, I'll just check it real quick. As she looks in her purse, Fitzgerald checks out the two passengers, the woman's five-year-old daughter and a young man. How you doing, sir? All right. All uh... right. Suddenly, the officer spots something in the woman's purse, a bag full of marijuana. Immediately, Fitzgerald gets the woman out of the car and make sure his backup is on the way. Hey, head this way. I'm about to go 1095. Hey, what you got? I think I got about a pound. about three. A moment later, Fitzgerald confronts the woman. Miss Jackson, y'all got any more marijuana in the car than what's on the seat? Uh-uh. You can check me and check everybody I, mean, I don't smoke. Now Fitzgerald focuses on the male passenger. Let me get you out real quick. You got no guns on you, nothing, dude. The man's breath reeks of marijuana. In fact, he's so stoned he gets tangled in his own seatbelt. Squat down, I'll help you. Uh, you ain't got no hand grenades, rocket launchers on you. All right, put your hands out there for me. The officer discovers a wad of 50s in the man's back pocket. But the suspect claims it's to pay court fees. How much money you got back here? Well, I had to pay the time, but that, they told me to come back Monday morning. It's an unlikely story, and it doesn't take a canine unit to tell that this cash smells like drug money. Do me a favor and stand right there in front of the car, okay? After Fitzgerald gives the interior a quick once-over, bring your right hand back to me. He puts cuffs on the man. What did he do? You're being placed under arrest, both of you, marijuana. Stand right here, there in the car. Marijuana in your purse, man. To make herself appear innocent, the woman acts up a storm. Put the marijuana in my purse. But she doesn't act too surprised when her partner ditches the drugs right in front of her. Why are you going to put me on the bed for marijuana in my purse? The male suspect has moved the drug bag to his pants. While Officer Fitzgerald is distracted, he pulls it out and kicks it under the car. What'd you do with it? Man, ain't no marijuana. Ain't going to do with that. Ain't nobody had no marijuana. I don't know what kind you're trying to do. No matter how much they argue, he knows what he saw. Look, look, calm down. I don't want to get a little girl upset now. Y'all both calm down. He lets the girl out so he can give the car a more thorough inspection. Well, what the hell did he do with it? Finally, he decides to look underneath the car. There it is. Get away. Under the car. Let me tell you something. You see that video tape rolling? Yeah, They're going to see you throwing it out. You hear me? He goes to move their vehicle. What happens next is amazing. Officer Fitzgerald pulls the car forward. As soon as the bag is exposed, hey! the man grabs hey! it and makes a dash for the woods. What the hell are you doing? But he drops it in his flight, and the officer quickly chases him down. Go out in the woods! Go out in the woods! The man is blatantly telling his partner to get rid of the evidence. He must have already forgotten about the video camera. By the time backup arrives, Officer Fitzgerald has the situation back under control. That's an ironic observation, especially coming from this guy. No matter how much she denies everything, she and her partner are going to jail, and there'll be no denying that. These dope dealers thought they were home free, 
You can set me and check everything and I don't smoke. But no matter where they stashed their contraband. What'd you do with it? Or how obviously they tried to get rid of it. It's all out in the woods. It's all out in the woods. Officer Keith Fitzgerald hey. was always one step ahead. Throw him in jail. It's easy to get distracted behind the wheel, especially if there's a traffic stop or an accident. But if you take your eyes off the road, even for a second, you can end up in a lot of trouble. And over Kansas, an officer has stopped an erratic driver. You know your license is suspended. Uh, you got a DUI win. As the cop examines the driver's paperwork, a curious driver slows down to see what's going on. What's the address, sir? You know, you know. Suddenly it happens. The driver's sudden braking catches another driver off guard. The fast-moving sedan slams into the slower station wagon, spinning at 180 degrees. Stay right here, right back with you. The officer calmly radios for emergency equipment. He moves his unit and then checks on the victims. Is anybody hurt? No, no there's nobody hurt. The officer has to get the accident cleared off the road. So he lets the first driver go with just a citation. You know, I'm going to issue a citation, OK? I can very easily arrest you right now. This isn't the first accident he's seen caused by a looky-loo. And it won't be his last. Some drivers will look at anything the police do, even if it's nothing more than waiting to cross an intersection. Another part of Andover, Kansas. 84. As officers prepare to cross, Another car enters the intersection opposite them. Again, without warning, it happens. A speeding car blows through the stop sign and slams into an unsuspecting motorist. Officers wheel around and seal up the intersection. 848, the road. Stand by. Miraculously, no one is seriously injured. They advise a 48 carrying end of road. But as they begin clearing the debris and letting cars through, something even more amazing happens. A clueless motor slams into this mammoth SUV. The tiny compact flips the full-size truck on its side. Incredibly, despite the impact, the driver makes a reckless attempt to run. But he doesn't get very far before police rush in. Whenever drivers pay more attention to what the police are doing than to the road ahead, they risk everything. These rubber-necking drivers just wanted to see a little action. Instead, they became the action. Coming up world's wildest police videos. Excuses, excuses. A young whiner blames her memory. I forgot there was a stop sign there. A Georgia fugitive blames his car. And a desperate woman blames the news. I was told by the news, do not. Their reasons are ridiculous. Listen, it's Easter and I haven't been to church. Their actions are terrifying. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Why the subject jumped off the bridge? Dealing with people at their most desperate. Oh my God. At their most delusional. At their most dangerous. You just went, you just went. Takes power. Patience. and precision. Sometimes a drunk driver is so wild and unpredictable that the reckless chances he takes can stun even the most experienced cop. Florence, Alabama. A drunk driver blasts through the early morning call, running stop sign after stop sign, driving on the wrong side of the road, and sometimes barely staying on the road. Following each dangerous move is Officer Chris Tyser. <laughs> Officer Tyser is not just any cop. He's the Florence Police Department's pursuit expert. And right now, all his training and skill is being put to the test. Back up on the way. 
Officer Tyser races to pull up next to the suspect. But at the last second, the driver swerves right from the left lane. The officer quickly responds and just misses the concrete median. Turn the head to the west side. Backup moves in with a rolling roadblock to box in this loose cannon. The slippery suspect just swerves around it, but he can't shake Officer Tyson. Turn around, the suspect takes off again, but this time he's ready to risk it all. From years of experience, Officer Tyson knows exactly what the suspect is planning. He's gonna try to take us out in the field, probably. He's gonna try to bail out in the field. When the suspect foot bails, Officer Tyser reacts in an instant. In his drunken state, the suspect struggles wildly. Kick me in my neck! Kill me. Man, what you calm down? It finally takes five officers to restrain the man. Come on, you just kill me! Kill me to take a hot dog of this! This guy is looking at charges of DUI, reckless endangerment, and resisting arrest. Touchy, touchy. How much you had to drink? Yeah, this suspect drove like he had nothing to lose. He didn't care about anyone else on the road, and he cared even less about his own life. But lucky for him, and for the rest of the people in Florence, pursuit expert officer Chris Tyser was right behind him and never gave up. San Antonio, Texas. An officer stops a driver for a common traffic violation. He's in our not wearing your safety belt. Officer, your registration's expired. A simple ticket, but there's nothing routine about this woman's attitude. You're not gonna let me go. No, ma'am. Folks, I don't want you manhandling me. At first, she starts acting like a spoiled two-year-old. You just wait there, ma'am. I'm gonna follow you. You can wait there. I don't need for you to get run over. Okay? So You're not responsible. Yes, I am. If you mind waiting there, you can sit in your car. Yes, I do. She appears to cooperate, but that doesn't last long. Do you have another driver's license? She doesn't respond. She's too busy on her cell phone with her sister. Unbelievably, she's talking trash about the officer. Can you please step out of the vehicle, huh? After getting her current license, the officer just needs one more thing, and then the woman can drive away. What I need for you to do is, I need your signature here. But she refuses. Well, I'm gonna look for my registration. Ma'am. The officer Ma now has no choice. Tell you what, I wanna place you under arrest at this no. time. Then the woman digs herself into an even deeper hole. No, oh, you cannot arrest me. Yes. I'm gonna call my husband. Here, ma'am. Now, instead of having to pay a small fine for a misdemeanor, she's resisting arrest. After jumping into her car, she grabs her phone again. But this time, she's not calling family. I'm calling the police. I've got a state trooper here who is being very rude, very ugly. He doesn't know what he's doing. The cop also calls for backup. Do you have any units in this vicinity? Yes. Other officers arrive on the scene, and this highway princess is now in more trouble all because she wouldn't quit while she was ahead. This woman claimed she was a victim of brutality, but because of this police video, there'll only be one charge that sticks, resisting arrest. When it comes to running from the law, there's never a good excuse, but that doesn't stop people from trying to come up with one. Forsyth, Georgia. Code 19, coming up on our C intersection. A minute ago, this driver had nothing more against him than a traffic violation. Whoa, left on the Germany Spur. Now he has charges of evading police. He's lost, he don't even know where he's going. And reckless endangerment. Up ahead, officers have set up a roadblock. I think we're gonna get him, they got us a roadblock. But the driver and his passenger aren't stopping for anything. Until they make one wrong move too many. He just went, he just went. And what reason could they possibly have for not stopping earlier? We didn't have any brakes on the car. They claim they didn't have any brakes. But they could have coasted to a stop at almost any time, like up this hill. The real reason is a lot more believable. The car they were driving was stolen. Camden County, Georgia.
This woman driver is being pulled over for speeding. Police run the license plates, and everything checks out. But suddenly, she's on the run. If she stops at the red light at 40, let's block her off and take her there. One patrol car moves in front of the woman as another police car comes up alongside. Oh, my goodness. She just swerves around it and narrowly avoids hitting this patrol car. And what was her excuse? She was afraid they weren't real officers. The woman driving alone has got to be careful. But when there are five marked patrol cars with lights and sirens on her tail, she's got to know they're for real. In another part of Camden County, Georgia, Officer Jason Merrill pulls over this car for an illegal U-turn. How you doing? You got a driver's license? No? Step on back here. Get out of the car. The driver has no excuse for not getting out of his vehicle. Officer Merrill opens the car door, but that doesn't stop the driver from speeding off. He takes police on a brief chase that ends with a horrifying crash. The suspect is injured and trapped behind the wheel. Now he's got an excuse for not getting out of the car. He'll spend months in a neck brace. Some pursuits are so ridiculous, so crazy, you have to wonder what the drivers were thinking. No matter how they try to justify it, running from the law is never worth it. And there's never an excuse. I was told by the news, do not stop. The tempo, guys, stop the mom box. Come on out. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. A mild-mannered woman. I'm sorry about it. I really am. Becomes a screaming brat. What? I had a hard day. A hot rod biker becomes a not-so-easy rider. And a driverless car becomes a circling time bomb. When it comes to the unexpected, expect it here. You're starting the search and rescue. Some want to get away with it. Did you give me a warning? Some just want to get away. I'm get a motorcycle stop. But wanting I got a and getting get are two very different things. You better get out of them. Some crooks think a motorcycle is the ultimate escape vehicle. But when it comes to winning pursuits, any cop will tell you it's not what you drive, it's how you drive. Spartanburg, South Carolina. A security guard has been shot by a suspect who fled on a motorcycle. Black male, red helmet. A deputy spots a man fitting the description. He orders him to pull over. It's possible he stopped the wrong guy. If so, why is he running? The suspect guns his engine and speeds away. The chase is on. At a stop sign, the rider goes from the throttle to the brake in a heartbeat. He's counting on the bike's size and speed to get him through traffic. For a moment, it looks like the suspect's plan has worked. But there's only one person in this pursuit who's trained to drive at high speeds, and that's the deputy. When the suspect attempts a high-speed turn, he comes within inches of wrecking. Covering quickly, the suspect tries to lose the officer on a winding road. 10 -toil, 10 -toil. But the deputy has horsepower and years of driving experience on his side. We're coming back around. Once again, the suspect leans on the throttle, relying on the motorcycle's acceleration. But when the superior speed meets an inferior driver, the results are painful. The rider tries to hit the brakes, but he's at the mercy of momentum. Amazingly, the man is unhurt, but by the time he gets his helmet off, the deputy has his gun drawn. You better get out of him. This assault suspect thought two wheels were better than four. 
and thanks to one deputy's skill and training, a runaway criminal took the fall and went to jail. Douglas County, Georgia, Easter Sunday. An officer pulls a woman over for running three stop signs. Sorry, sir, I just forgot. I was like, thinking about something else. I really you forgot what? I forgot the stop sign there. How about all three of them? How about, how about coming back here for a moment? The officer writes her a ticket, but the woman thinks she deserves special treatment. Can you please give me a warning? I mean, I'm here every night. They just think you're right I just, I was thinking about something else, sir. It's Easter. I've worked all day. It would have the same effect and will be observant forever after. But the officer isn't backing down. Sorry about it. I really am. You're going to sign this for me? Could you give me a warning? No, ma'am. I'm going to make a citation and appearance. Your court date is the 22nd day of May of 1995 at 9 a.m. I've been up forever. Ma'am, I'm not going to argue with this. I, I've written a citation. But I'm on this You can either day. sign for a copy of the receipt or I'll impound your vehicle. Sir, I really need your help here. Ma'am, I'm not changing my mind. I don't write a citation and change my mind, okay? But I need your help, Are you going to sign this? I need your help, please. Ma'am. I'm not, I'm I, issuing you I, and, I and my girl. I didn't commit a crime. But she has committed a crime, and the officer has a job to do. When he pulls out the cuffs, the woman shows her true colors. Give me the pen, then. Look, young lady. Look, I've had a hard day. You don't understand what's happened to me. You know what's happening to me? Give me the cuffs. Now give me the pen. The officer is determined to take her in. Faced with jail, the woman now wants the ticket. Sign your paper, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll sign your paper. Please. Can I sign it? Please. And her excuse for her behavior? Listen, it's Easter. I have it in the church, OK? This woman begged. I'm really sorry. She pleaded. Can't you help me? She even tried getting tough. Give me the pen, then. She gave the officer no choice but to take her in. Next, on World's Wildest Police Videos, Roadside Madness. Get on the ground now! The videos are unbelievable. The stakes are life and death. The subject jumped off the bridge. Any officer will tell you that no matter how outrageous the calls get, there's always something out there that you've never seen before. Daphne, Alabama. A patrolling officer spots a possible DUI. Initiating a traffic stop. He immediately signals the driver to pull over. He doesn't respond. Suspect refusing to yield. As the officer prepares for a pursuit, the suspect may try to run. The driver unexpectedly pulls over. As they pull to a stop on an empty bridge, the suspect exits his car and walks around his vehicle to the side of the bridge. What he does next is incredible. Stop the back. Stop the back. The suspect just jumped off the bridge at the 35. Without even a pause, he hops over the rail and jumps off the bridge. The shocked and surprised officer runs to where the suspect jumped. We had two Daphne stop the search and rescue this way. Subject just jumped off the bridge. But there's no sign of the suspect. As it turns out, he escaped that night. But two days later, his free fall to freedom ended with a trip to jail. But sometimes the bizarre and unusual calls are part of the routine. Madison Heights, Michigan. A 911 call about an out of control vehicle at a gas station. An officer races there before an accident can spark a catastrophe. Arriving on the scene, she spots the car spinning wildly. Then she discovers there's no one behind the wheel. When the engine was left running, the transmission slipped into reverse, and the classic Mustang took off. The officer realizes that one wrong move could send this car into the gas pumps and touch off an inferno. She decides there's only one thing to do. She edges her unit forward, but can't get close enough. She inches closer and waits for the right moment. Now. 
The runaway car slams into the police cruiser in a metal crunching stop. Luckily for everybody, this officer's quick thinking saved a lot of lives. Sedgwick County, Kansas. A career criminal blazes down a state highway at 100 miles per hour. He's not stopping and he's gonna take someone out. Before police can complete a roadblock, the speeding suspect flies right past them. Then he takes a hard left off the highway and tears into town. We're at K-15, he's northbound on K-15. Hold up, we're down northbound on K-15. The suspect's car sustains a blowout, but even that can't stop him. He careens through a residential neighborhood, his car chassis scraping the asphalt. His right front tire is completely down. He's driving on the rim on the right front. You'd think a car thief would have jacked a better looking vehicle. Now the car is trailing sparks like a comet. If the fuel tank ruptures, those sparks could ignite the gas. The suspect is still reckless and fearless. I have a PD car coming straight at me. He doesn't want to stop. When a police vehicle tries to block his path, the man nearly hits it head on. Move by the PD car, northbound 11th Street. The suspect knows his car is done for. Stop! Desperate, he makes his escape on foot. What happens next is amazing. The man actually tries to hide in a bush. Sheriff's Office, come out, your hands up! Come on, come on! Now it ain't me! He tries to deny it, but the officer knows he's the only car-stealing felon in this neck of the woods. This career criminal thought he could ride into the sunset and run until the wheels came off. But by the end, he couldn't run or even hide. No, it ain't me! From Sedgwick County deputies. Certainly not done with this chase. The law enforcement officer. <laughs> no other job is more unpredictable, <laughs> more terrifying, he doesn't want to stop. or more necessary. They see things at their wildest, <laughs> scariest and deadliest. He just went, he just went. They handle it, and they deal with it, so you don't have to.